अपन लैंग्वेज हिंदी रख रहे हैं इंग्लिश रख रहे हैं The language is actually English because it will be difficult for all of us to converse everything in Hindi. But of course, in the middle of the session, we can explain in Hindi as well. What I was thinking. हाँ थोड़ा सा भी कुछ अगर nursing. Ma'am, we are live. You can switch on the cameras and start. Yeah. I welcome all uh, our panelists, our speakers, our moderator for the second half of this. Yeah. Training. so i welcome on board i can see madam neel kamal kapoor i can see dr mamta and uh, the the speakers and the moderators of the previous session are here with us uh, madam anju and uh, madam mamta uh, madam uh, somya and it was a wonderful session which we had in the first half and there were lot of queries i think about 200 questions we had to take in the first session and we expect the same enthusiasm in the second session as well so uh, we are live now and we straight away start our session we cannot see madam uh, kapoor actually hi hi ma'am yeah um, i'm i'm having my lunch so i'll be you know unseen at the moment the moment i finish it you sure, can take <laughs> sure ma'am so uh, sobhya madam we can start our session ma'am okay um good afternoon everyone i hope uh, those who have joined they are like really looking forward to this session and i hope they continue uh, uh, since uh, ye, it's not an interactive session uh, question answers ke liye you will have a uh, you will have a window where you can pose your questions and as and when i see necessary aapke questions hai to main a lecture ke beech mein in between of the lecture i will ask ma'am those questions so i'm there to answer uh, to convey all your questions to the uh, speaker today uh so this uh, first of all let me introduce myself i'm somya saxena i work with action aid association in india and i'm the program officer there and i work on gender and women rights issues and i'm a lawyer as well uh so when we talk about uh, this the framework of this entire workshop the idea behind this is that we uh, you like you all work in a premier institute of india and the employee number is in thousands and there are men and women both there uh, who work together in a very complicated situation because you all work in a, a hospital so i assume it's a very complicated situation where you are working so there might be instances where there will be some uh, collisions there will be some issues between men and women and how do we interact so government and uh, other institutions have laid down certain policies regarding professional behavior between men and women what is correct what is not of course it's not very definitive aisa nahi hai ki kuch boundaries hai ki kya hum bol sakte hain kya nahi bol sakte but still ek idea to give a little idea to everyone that how colleagues especially male colleagues and female colleagues should interact and how can we build a very sensitive environment within a workplace so that everybody who comes whether he is lower in hierarchy whether he is the most topmost person in the institute we all have a very mm, cohesive and uh, fulfilling work environment so to begin with uh, the context and the gender idea of gender sensitivity first and foremost i would like to say that most of us here especially personally me uh, and our entire framework we identify women rights or feminism uh, as one of the core values of our work and uh, often and not these values are not somehow mirrored or shared in a similar way in other organizations uh, and often people have this misconception about women rights about feminism or about uh, empowering uh, legislations which are present for women that uh they can either be misused or they are anti men or they are giving uh you know unnatural power or uh, too much power in the hands of women to exploit so in this session we take a chance to break down these kinds of conceptions or misconceptions people hold in their minds regarding uh female uh female oriented laws or women laws or women laws protecting that of women uh to begin with when i talk about gender and sex 
I know that uh, since you all are from the medical profession, you clearly know what how sex is defined in the uh, between men and women. How, what is sex? But the concept of gender, when it kicks in, I think Anju Ma'am will uh, dic- uh, will teach you, will tell you about it further. Uh, but to give a little premise that gender and sex are not the same things. How uh, sex is, of course, biological sex. You are a man and a, a man or woman. You have your own um, uh, different hormone chromosomes and all, which I think you are uh, uh, better equipped to tell. But when we talk about gender, we talk about an assimilation of certain custom traditions which have been carried on since the entire civilization started and how uh, power, there have been a power shift. There have been a system where women have always been on the receiving end or at the end where they do not have the control or in the society or they don't have the similar status in society as that of men. But with growing times, changing times, activism, new theories that has come out, uh, new, st- new theory and ideology that kicked in later uh, when we were in the contemporary society, uh, more or less we find women and men, men and men, women breaking their boundaries and entering the realm which they were previously not allowed. So from uh, a situation where women were not allowed to work or they could not take up professions which were considered predominantly male professions like that of being a doctor itself. Uh, it was very clear that um, men, is, uh, men can be doctors while the nursing staff was completely uh, that of women. So this, when these barriers were broken and men and women came at the same platform and started working together, uh, they legally or let's say legally or socially we were doing that, but still uh, many people carry the same conceptions which they still cannot break down in their mind. Uh, where there's still things that, where there's still thing where patriarchy, that is uh, male hegemony, play a very important uh, role in their minds, that how they interact with men, how they interact with women, reflect in their behavior. And it can be both men and women. Men and women both can be patriarchal and how they work together, can uh, it can reflect in their working style or how they perceive things in a work environment. So to begin with, um, uh, there's a, uh, feminist uh, academician, Gerda Lerner, who told us that, who through series of uh, research uh, came to a conclusion that last in, in the last 10,000 years, there has been a systemic, uh, systemic way how power from the hands of women were taken and conceded that in the hand of men. So we see the entire system today that how uh, we conduct ourselves society, how the society will operate, what we teach women, what we tell women, how we tell women to behave, is pretty much how uh, the men in the society decide. So when we, when today, when we break these stereotypes, when we talk about equality, equity, and women being uh, at par with men, a lot of stereotypes today will be broken in today's session. And a lot of difficult uh, questions uh, will be posed towards you. Mm-hmm. Uh, like in the previous session, I saw mm-hmm. a lot of questions mm-hmm. asking that mm-hmm. um, these laws are anti-men. These laws are giving too much power to men and why it is happening, why men do not have similar laws for their, for their protection. So if we see the trends, if we see the logistics, if we see the uh, statistics, uh, we observe that there are more women who are being harmed. Uh, women are more uh, still like every third woman is a victim, uh, is a survivor, is a victim of any sort of violence, any sort of assault. And while when we compare this data to that of men, we don't see such trends that often. Of course, it exists, but we don't see that trends often. Often. So primarily, if we are considering women more marginalized, I think these laws are there to make her, make her more equipped to get to a platform where she is able to seek justice and speak for her or speak on her, for, her, for herself. So given this background, I think it's very important we learn the whole notion of gender and how to break the stereotypes which exist in our mind. So uh, I would now request Ms. Uh, Anju Talukdar to take over. And before she does that, I will give a small uh, introduction about her as well. Uh, Ms. Talukdar is an advocate and she is the founder trustee of the Rights Mission. And she has been really passionate about the justice and legal empowerment for the marginalized community. By marginalized community, I mean she has worked 
uh, uh, she has written and edited several books for the rights of scheduled caste, scheduled type tribes, uh, Muslim women and their education, etc. And uh, she has been a pioneer in setting up the human rights law network in Guwahati and for securing the rights of the marginalized communities as well. And she has been a practicing advocate in the High Court, Guwahati High Court, for a really long time. And we are really privileged that today she is here to share her views and uh, tell us about uh, gender sensitization at workplace and the workplace laws. So I welcome Ms. Anju and I hope uh, you all enjoy the session and please keep posting your questions. I will be uh, taking those questions uh, with, with ma'am as in when I find it necessary and important. And please make sure the questions are relevant uh, to uh, whatever is being, it's being spoken about. You can have your questions. Some questions I will take at the end and some questions which are relevant to the current discussion, I will take uh, 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 simultaneously with uh, Anjuman. So uh, welcome Anjuman. And uh, yes. yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Soumya. As ever, you're doing a great job as I an anchor. I <laughs> put the shoes, but I tried. <laughs> yeah, great. So uh, thank you again, Dr. Pavna, the entire uh, IC of uh, Ames Kopal and um, uh, you know, for this opportunity uh, to be here. And all the participants who have joined uh, today, I believe you're, uh, we have uh, mainly uh, young students budding, uh, doctors and nurses. Uh, thank you all for your time. And uh, um, as you set on this journey, on a, the, the work you do is, uh, or that you do now and that you will be doing for the rest of your career is so critically important. I wish you all the best. And um, um, what we'll be doing today, we'll be just you know, some things which will uh, hopefully just help make the journey a little better for you. Yeah? Bits of the law to make the, your, your journey as a medical professional uh, as, as smooth as it can be, because the work you do is so fabulous. So thank you all for uh, being here today. Uh, I, uh, uh, we will be, I think you've probably seen the, uh, uh, you, you, you've, you've seen the, uh, uh, um, the, uh, 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 the, the booklet. So you have some idea of the um, uh, content that we're, we're, we're going to follow. So um, I'll just, let me just share this. I, I can get this right now. Is this working? I... Okay. Is, is that visible? <laughs> it's visible, right? The, yes, ma'am. Uh, Just put it in the presentation. Uh, great. Thank you. Thank you for that, right? Great. So we're going to speak about this issue of. Uh, prevention of sexual harassment at the workplace and why it's important and really why are we here today. Um, if we look at the, um, we'll be looking at the uh, the context setting, setting the uh, understanding the concept of gender, etc. Now, why is this important? Why is gender sensitization and anti-sexual harassment laws and the workplace, why are they important at all? Really, why are you spending your time here? Now, uh, one key reason is this, one is the, the legal necessity of it. So we have a law which is called the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace. It's the Prevention, Prohibition and Redressal Act of 2013. Uh, it's also uh, called the Posh Act for short. Some people call it the SHW Act. So it is uh, one law with many names. Okay. Uh, now, this law has one provision which says that if you're working somewhere, uh, then um, uh, your employer, the employer of any workplace, uh, the employer is basically the one who is responsible for the whole establishment. So in, 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 a, in an establishment, like if it's medical college, the Ames, for instance, uh, an institution like this, whoever is heading that is called the employer. Now, the, it is the duty of the employer to organize such workshops. So one is we are fulfilling the legal requirement of uh, attending these workshops and awareness programs. And they're supposed to be held at a regular basis. So that's one reason why we're here. Certainly it's to fulfill a certain legal duty. 
But um, I would say much more than that. The reason we're here is it's no less than, you know, it's a duty to the constitution of India. As, as citizens of this country, even if you're not a citizen, if you're living in this country, we have, we have a duty to this, this fabulous book which uh, binds us all and guides us all. Now, the, um, the Porsche Act says see, with sexual harassment in the workplace, if it occurs, this is a violation of the Constitution of India because it violates the fundamental rights of a woman's right to equality. So we have articles 14 and 15 of the Constitution which basically ensure the fundamental right to equality. So when women are sexually harassed, that is a violation of their right to equality. It's a violation of Article 21, Article 21, a very critical article of the Constitution, which is which guarantees the right to life, the guarantees the right to a life of dignity to every person in this country, even if you're not a citizen. So there's a violation of that. How would we live if you're, if 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 our access to livelihood is threatened or we are under uh, under this sort of pressure in the workplace? So it is. It, it, it violates her right to practice any profession or trade, etc. So it's sexual harassment in the workplace. The reason we are here is to make sure not just to fulfil uh, the legal requirement of attending a workshop, but it is also to protect. It, it is we are fighting for constitutional rights uh, of um, uh, women and basically for, for this constitution of India, yeah? because we don't want our, our law to be violated. Another reason why we are here is because. Look at the ramifications. If you if there's sexual harassment in the workplace, I hope that wherever you work, you will never experience this. But if it does happen, I can assure you, it can disrupt work like anything. Sometimes it comes to a point where you know people are, are speaking of nothing else but that. It, it lowers motivation. It um, it is associated with increased risk of there's anxiety, depression, post traumatic stress disorder, diminished self esteem, lack of self confidence. It completely affects. It can reduce your productivity, bring it to a zero, and it can vitiate the whole atmosphere. becomes you know, it's very difficult to work. So maybe may you never have to work in a place where there is sexual harassment. So there's another reason we, we have to make sure that our workplaces are safe uh, and free of sexual harassment, so people can work uh, freely and uh, productively. Because see, the benefits of a workplace that is free from sexual harassment is you have a harmonious working environment. And it's, this is important. I mean, the work you do is, is so critical. You're, you're dealing with, you'll be dealing with people's lives, really. And you and that is challenging enough. You don't need other, you know, uh, impediments to, to, to reduce your productivity because that can cost, cost lives. So a harmonious work environment, because one person can't do everything. You have to work in a team to give the best uh, service. And that team has to work harmoniously. And it, if, you, if, if sexual harassment is the one sure recipe to completely disrupt uh, service, it increases productivity, reduces absenteeism because if, if, you know mental stress that comes from sexual harassment it leads uh, women to you know think that let's not even you know I can't face this day I can't go to that workplace and again uh, be subject to this uh, uh, this experience. Most of all, it, it creates collaboration and cooperation between employees, and all this is, is so important for work to go well. So there are huge benefits of a workplace that is free from sexual harassment, and there are huge disadvantages when there is uh, actually sexual harassment that occurs and is, is not uh, redressed. So for all these reasons, it's why we are here. So when we think of sexual harassment in the workplace, please don't think of it as something, oh, that's something which we have to attend. It's about rights. It's about doing the right thing. It's about upholding the right values. Yeah. Um, right, so uh, here's where I think we will go to those um, first set of questions. Uh, I'll, I request Sunil to please uh, send the link for the first set of questions, uh, which you then, I think you can, you can, you can, participants will have to answer and submit, the, uh, submit those answers. Uh, is, is Sunil there? The first, yes, uh, the first uh, just to inform that the assessment, uh, uh, our question link is there on the weblink itself. In yes. case you are not able to see it, just refresh your weblink. You should be able to see it. And then click on the link and you'll be able to answer the questions. So we'll just wait for a couple of minutes while you go through that. In the meantime, if there are any questions, maybe we could have some discussions.
Yes, ma'am. Uh, there are certain questions from the uh, participants. Already? Okay. Joined. Nice. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, uh, there was one person. It was not. It's not relevant. It's not uh, relevant to the content. He's asking that why don't we have this class uh, uh, offline? Other than re please give mm -hmm. reason. Other than Corona. So. I would like to <laughs> tell that I mean it's it's really I mean this class should have been uh, offline because yeah. the more interactive it is, it's the better it is. But I think your institution mm -hmm. has certain limitation because a lot of people are involved. Um, like there are thousands of you, and so the best thing we thought we could do it online and take your questions here, um, ma'am. Other than that, uh, one person is asking if this law is specifically for uh, females. And if mm -hmm. a man is being harassed by a female, what can he do? Mm -hmm. We look at that uh, as it comes along. See, this this particular law is, see, the name is, is protection of women, but let's not see it as a law for women. Uh, that it is called protection for women, but this is any any good law is actually for everybody. You know, I mean, uh, we have to see it in terms of um, uh, if, 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 if a law is made for a man, uh, can we really say that women will not be affected by it? I mean, it, it, it's sort of, um, uh, if, um, if something is good in the legal system, when you talk of justice, if something is good for you, it should also be good for me. Otherwise, it will, it, it, because justice is not a zero-sum game, right? So we'll, take, we'll come to that, what men can do, although, and we'll see why this law is specifically for women, Though there are organizations which actually open it out to which which have gen gender neutral, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, policies, uh, we'll come to that. I think in a bit, so I won't repeat the thing right now. You see, that is that is one big concern. But the thing is, with the law as it is, it's uh, it's it's actually for everybody because it is about making workplaces safe, hmm. and it was seen that women are. Um, are most at risk sometimes in, in the workplace. So if, if you ensure they, their safety, the entire workplace becomes safe. And if the workplace is safe, it's good for everybody. You know, so although this law is, it's, it's named as protection of women, the benefit is for everybody. The ben beneficiaries are in the entire society. I mean, even from the patients who, you know, who visit, they will all benefit from this law. If, if the workplace, if, if, if the environment is such that it is, that people are, you know, we can work productively, productively, and there's no sense of mistrust and, you know, discomfort with uh, with each other, then it is good for everyone. So, I mean, let's not see it as a law that is good for women. It's good for everyone, though it is named as, yes, but the protection of women, but the, everyone is a beneficiary. So, but, but, but I'll discuss that in more detail in, just in, in, in the session after this. Yeah. And because there are many questions regarding the um, procedures on how to file a complaint. So I think you will come to that initially. Uh, yeah, in I'll, I'll, I'll come to that as well. Yeah. Right now, that's it. Right. Okay, so I think uh, people may have finished those questions in a very brief, maybe uh, just wait another couple of seconds. <clears throat> I think there were just two questions that shouldn't take too long. Uh, so, Swami, should I just proceed? I, I think. Uh, yes, ma'am, please proceed. Mm, I think I will, right? Okay. So, now let's look at the concept of gender. Mm, Swami has touched upon that already and already told you that, you know, uh, how it's, it's uh, sex and gender are different. Now, let's look at this from the um, understanding the concept of gender from the feminist perspective and gender discrimination. Now, this word feminism. Uh, feminist tends to scare people, you know. So if I ask you whether you're a feminist or not, you know, the thing is that the checklist for being a feminist is whether you believe, if you think that men and women are of equal value hmm, as human beings, then you're a feminist. If you If you think that women are not inferior to men, you know, then you are a feminist. If you think men and women should have uh, equal opportunities and equal rights to happiness, then you are a feminist. Yeah? So um, I don't know uh, that there is a, there are many views on, you know, many women especially I find they go out of their way to explain, you know, I'm not a feminist. 
And I wonder, does it mean that you're, if, you're, if you say you're not a feminist, you basically either you're saying that, you know, women are inferior to men, or you're saying women are superior to men, because of, that is not the feminist view. It is about equality. And if you think men and women are equal, and they're equally entitled to, to rights and protection, and they're, they're equal or of equal value as human beings, then you're a feminist. So don't let this word frighten you. Yeah? If, if you subscribe to the view that men are superior or men are inferior, then there may be an issue. But if you believe in human beings, that we're all uh, um, you know, of equal value, then, then you should have no problem with this. I, I think that the Constitution of India, you know, I would see it as, 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 as a, it, it's a feminist document because you know, it opens with this line, we the people. It doesn't say, but we the men of India or the women of India. You know, there's no up and down there. We the people of India. You know, we have given ourselves this constitution. So, so this is about looking at men, men and women, human beings, as equal. Yeah. So let's let's look at this now. Sex versus gender. What's the difference between with, with you know the, these terms? Yes, they're very sometimes that they're used interchangeably. You know, uh, but uh, when we look at but but it's important to see it in. Uh, there are important differences between them, and, and it's 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 uh, fundamental to the understanding of this particular law. So when we refer to sex, it is the biological attributes, the physical thing or physiological, either you're being male or female. You know, so you've got these little babies here. So when a baby is born, uh, you know, the, 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 the nurse can immediately say, the doctors can say, oh, it's a boy or it's a girl. You know, it doesn't take. And there are some complexities here as well, which I won't go into right now because you know there, there could be um, you know, the, uh, the issues of intersex, etc. So we won't go into all that. But normally, if you, if you look at sex in this binary thing of male or female, that's what sex. Uh, that's how it can be understood. That of being either male or female, and this is determined by nature. It's a physical thing. Uh, it's physiological. It's biological, right? And so, therefore, things um, uh, the, the whatever attributes there are of being male or female comes from this. So, for instance, that you know the 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 tendency that, that, that uh, uh, men tend to have more muscles than women, or uh, when it's it comes to, um, uh, to giving birth to children, that you know it's, it's women who can who, who can get pregnant, and so all this is in a sense it's determined by nature so that's what we mean by sex being male or female now we have something uh, now it's often referred to as sex assigned at uh, birth when we talk of binary understanding sex in a binary way male or female so you see a baby is born okay it's a boy it's a girl you can just by its sex organs you can see that the, the, the sex is male or female but if you look at gender, now gender is a social construct. Gender is not determined by nature uh, or, or something physical. It is about the mind. It is about societal, social values, societal values, sometimes cultural values. What it is that, you know, what we expect from men, what we expect from women, what is masculine, what is feminine, which is not determined by Nature. So, in, in fact, uh, if, if you look at a whole, you know, a room full of newborn babies, you know, uh, the, 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 the baby boys and the baby girls, you really can't tell by their behavior who is a baby, who is a girl and who is a boy, you know, but then uh, when those little babies become, say, 20 year olds, then we can tell by their dress and sometimes by their behavior, okay, you know, that has become quite clear who is, uh, you know, uh, who are the male and who is female. Now, gender, so sex is about the physical thing. Gender is about the values determined by uh, society or, or, or uh, culture, right? So the idea that, you know, a girl, girl will be, you know, a little shy. We, we don't expect girls to be aggressive and be fighting and, you know, but we, we expect, you know, men would do that, that you would, you know, be, be aggressive, you'd be you know, confident, uh, you'd be very focused on your career, Whereas girls would probably have to be very pretty and, and dress nicely and you know be be loving and caring. You know? So these are all uh, gender attributes. Yeah? Uh, we are brought up to believe these things, and uh, so that's how it it uh, uh, it it, it uh, affects the way we um, you know the girls and boys are, are in a sense raised, and then they see themselves. This is how they have to behave. So. Um, it therefore, it really, it, it does affect our um, expectations and assessments of men and women. Now, for instance, if you see a man, 
who is you know, at night, if he's catching a taxi, you know, he, you normally don't think a man is going to worry, oh my God, will I be safe? You know, so, uh, uh, some months ago, I, I was, um, now for those who live in Delhi, you know, we're quite used to this, but for the rest of the country, Delhi is like this whole, this ghastly, terribly scary city. There was, a, there was a flight, I think it was about nine o'clock in the, no, I think it was about eight o'clock in the evening. And this woman was in the, in the Delhi airport. She just, you know, the, her car hadn't come to pick her up and she was calling in the phone. She said, no, I'm alone. I'm in, I'm in, in the Delhi. I'm in Delhi. I'm alone. And how am I going to go? And the car hasn't come. And she was like really scared. You know, but you, you wouldn't expect a man to, you know, uh, to be like, you know, I'm so scared now. I'm, I'm in the Delhi airport. How will I reach home safely? You know, because we expect, you know, men will be safe. They can take care of themselves, you know. Uh, we also don't. We, we have these these gender, you know, these gendered roles. We, we what we expect from men, what we expect from uh, women. We think women, well, they'd be, they, you know, they'd know how to cook. They'd love to talk about recipes and then the clothes, and then they'll probably notice what you're wearing. They're not going to talk about, you know, cricket and how much was scored in the India win the match and be like like this lady is so focused to do, you know, uh, whether Pujara is a good batsman or not. You know how we you know how we score compared to Dravid and Lakshman. So we don't expect women to to do that. You know, so it, it affects our see these gender, the gender roles. We we base our um, expectations of men and women from our ideas about gender, and it has an effect in the workplace. And very often it has a negative effect in the workplace. Yeah. Uh, so for, so for instance, um, uh, if now if if the gender view uh, it, it's, it's that women are better with children, or it is the, uh, uh, the, the primary role duty of bringing up children is of the mother, right? Then uh, we, 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 if, if, if a, a, a woman who, say a, a doctor who is, if she has a child at home who is sick, we might even look at what sort of a woman is this, what sort of a person, if her child is sick and she's come to work, Whereas if it is a man, a, 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 a male doctor who comes to work, the child has measles at home, we'll say, of course, he's a dedicated doctor, very good. You know? But for women, we, you know, she, she might face this additional thing, you know, the, the, the burden of guilt on her. You're a mother, but you've left your child. So it, 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 this affects productivity. You know? It's not that, because it, it should, in, in nature, doesn't say that, uh, uh, that, that men should spend less time with their children. It doesn't say that at all. But it, this is our societal views. This is how we have um, the expectations we have. And it, it leads, it, it affects uh, relations at work. It, it affects how we deal with each other uh, at work. So uh, I, I often think about um, uh, nurses. I mean, there are some who just can't imagine how can we have a nurse who is a male? Uh, nurses must be women, you know, we, we can't. So, so it, it will certainly affect uh, a man who is in the job of, of nursing. Right. So um, because of our gendered roles, we have something called gender discrimination. Now, gender discrimination is the unequal or disadvantageous treatment of an individual or a group of individuals based on gender. So we have these ideas of gender and then we treat people badly because of the ideas that we have, the ideas which came to us from society or have come to us from uh, our uh, culture. Uh, for instance, you know, you can have, um, I mean, these are just a few uh, random uh, examples. So if you hear this now, she is a bright young doctor, but now she has a baby, you know, so a young doctor who's just had a baby. So how can we expect her to give her full attention to her patients? We wouldn't say this of a young, if a young man, a young male doctor who has just had a child. We'll say congratulations, wonderful, great, and we expect him to show up for work the next day. Right? But if, if if a woman doctor has had a child and she's back at work, first we we think, what sort of a mother is she? She's left her child and she's coming. And if she uh, so if she comes to work, we think she's a bad mother. And if she doesn't, if she takes a leave to be with the child, we'll say, what sort of a doctor is she? She's so you know she's only thinking about her family. So th th this affects in how we treat uh, 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 women in, in the workplace. And this is gender discrimination because of our expectations. How do we know that, uh, uh, that a young man uh, who has a child at home, I mean, how do we know that the, the child is being taken care of? But we assume he's a man, so he must have taken care of things. Uh, a young woman comes to work, and a child is at home, we think, oh my God, how do we know? Maybe arrangements have been made. How do we know that the child is not safe? How do we make these assumptions? We make them because of 
are gender ideas and it, it leads to gender discrimination in the workplace. Oh, this uh, task is very tiring. It will need someone with a lot of strength and stamina. Let's not burden a woman with this. Sometimes these you know, difficult jobs, the thing is in a career, the more, uh, the, the, the more obstacles, the, the more challenges you take, the more you rise in your career. And sometimes you know, a difficult task will say, no, no, let's not give women this thing. It, it, it will say it's to protect them. But you're also depriving them of opportunities of growing. Or, or she'll be the only woman in the conference, so let's not take her, you know, let's just ask men go because it's more comfortable because the idea is, you know, men and women are so different and, you know, we, we, they really can't, when, we, when they work together, it's going to lead to all kinds of sexual complications. It doesn't have to be, but it's in our minds. We have that, idea that it's difficult for them to work together. Or if you go by, the, uh, you know, if a woman is very, you know, she looks good and she takes care of the way she appears and she's not really serious about her work. Like, are you a fashion model or are you a doctor? So someone is attractive and looks good and dresses well, and they think, oh, she's not serious. You know? How do we make this thing? Because we, we think that our women are supposed to spend half their time in taking care of their looks. So, so this is, again, in our minds. Or look at this. If you, you need someone tough uh, to deal with aggressive patients and their families, and... Um, Sorry, uh, she will find it difficult to uh, to cope. So where, where you have to, you know, the idea is women are, are a little weak. They're not that aggressive. They're not so strong. They're not so firm. So let's not give them these sort of challenging roles. So this is gender discrimination. Now, gender discrimination is, is um, it's not the same as we'll see what sexual harassment is. And sometimes the two can come together. And sometimes you, know, you can have gender discrimination without sexual harassment, sometimes uh, vice versa. So, for instance, you know, in, in a place where you know th there are organizations, uh, suppose that there's a company which does not recruit women at all. They have this belief: you bring in women, then they'll take maternity leave, then they take this leave and that leave. So let's not employ women. And that is gender discrimination. So they don't employ women at all. But there's no woman there for them to sexually harass. So there's no sexual harassment here. But it's definitely gender discrimination, right? But I will, I will I'll talk about a case where both things have happened. Huh? Where you, like, in this case of Bhavdi Devi, uh, I wonder whether you've heard of her, you are young students, but you, um, uh, here's a woman, uh, a name that we should remember as, as, uh, as people of, this, of, of India, uh, when we talk about how our laws have developed, uh, she is someone we, we should remember and we, we, we should always take her name off and on. That she, she's one of those who have helped to steer the the course of, of, of this country. So and this, this is a, what happened with Bhavri Devi is, is an example of gender discrimination as well as sexual harassment of an extreme form. Okay, now Bhavri Devi was uh, um, a social worker. She used to work against, um, uh, she, was, she was trying to fight child marriage uh, in, in, in her state. So um, what happened is, in, in, uh, what she she was trying to advocate against child marriage and so basically and so both the men in in her area you know they, they were they were they were very offended they felt who is this she's a woman she's a lower caste person she, she's a who's this woman telling us that our traditions are wrong telling us to change our ways telling us what is right and what is wrong she's a woman how can she tell us that we are wrong and so as a punishment she was, she was actually gang raped in 1992, and this was to punish her for the work that she was doing. So here's gender discrimination, very deep nature that, you know, how can this woman tell us what to do? If we think child marriage is good, who is she to say otherwise? And so she was punished in, in, in this way because of her, of her work. And the gang rape is, is an extreme kind of sexual harassment in the workplace. So with her, both things happened. So there was gender discrimination, and there was also uh, extreme sexual harassment. Now, but now, this happened in 1992. And what followed was, you know, there was a complete travesty of law. You know, so those who, um, who, were, who, uh, who, uh, who, was, who, who had uh, committed this horrible offense, they were let off easily. There were, there were things that, like, you know, how could it be rape? She's, you know, she's, she's, she's a lower caste woman. Why would upper caste men even want to go near her? And then how the, 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 the two of the accused, one was an uh, uncle and nephew, as if, you know, it is against our Indian culture for, you know, th they would not indulge in a sexual act like this together. So all these, these ideas came. So she, she did not get justice, you know, even now it's not really completely done. But what happened is because of this incident, there was, there was a huge furore uh, in 
in uh, across India, but very largely, of course, in in Rajasthan, where a lot of women activists, a lot of you know, social workers, they got together and said, "Look at this that has happened: extreme injustice to a woman. She's not getting help in her workplace. She's not getting help from the courts or the police. In fact, she was getting victimized again there." So they got together and said, we have to do something. They actually went in. At that time, there was no law on sexual harassment in the workplace. So these women, uh, the, 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 these people, men and women, not only women, they, they, they went, they, uh, many NGOs, they approached the uh, Supreme Court of India. And this was, it was a PIL, a public interest litigation, and the case was called uh, Vishaka versus State of uh, Rajasthan, the Vishaka and some other NGOs. So uh, this matter went to Supreme Court and the argument that what they told the Supreme Court is, look, this is how unsafe women are in their workplace and something has to be done. There's no law governing this issue. And the Supreme Court in 1997, it came up, it passed a judgment in this case. And this judgment came to be known as the Vishaka guidelines. And the Supreme Court laid down some directives that you know these are the things which employers, whether in the private sector or the public sector have to do to make sure that women are safe in the workplace. And of course, they spoke about women because the case which came to them was Bhavri Devi. It was, it, it, it was uh, the, the, uh, the, uh, the um, dangers being faced by women in the workplace. Mm -hmm. So uh, these Vishaka guidelines, basically, that was the law of the land. Many of the Supreme Court said it's not our job to make the law. But until Parliament makes a law, this will be the law of the land. This is what uh, employers will have to do. And it included things like you must have an internal committee and you must have, you know, uh, whole workshops like the what things we're doing now, etc. So um, now, the, this was 1997. For many years, nothing really happened until something horrible happened. And then in 2012, you have this absolute, this ghastly thing, which I think all of us will, uh, some of us will remember the rest of our lives. I think as a country, we should always remember this, this day, so December 16, 2012, where um, uh, the uh, the Nirbhaya gang rape. Subsequently, it's also murder because subsequently she she died. Uh, this <clears throat> incident again it it shook the country even more than the Vishaka than the Bhavri Devi's case did, and it it uh, there were protests all over India about the that the, the the lack of safety for women is is just not accepted. It has reached such a level that you know we can't take it anymore. <clears throat> and this led one of the fallouts of this was that. The, the laws changed, the rape laws of the country changed, and this law also came uh, into uh, play. Uh, in 2013, this law was finally passed. And really, it was because of this. I, I, I believe that if it hadn't been for this, you know, you know, it's, it's a horrible thing to have happened. But it, it's sad that it, it takes a horrible thing for something good to happen, but that's what happened here. So Bhavri Devi and, you know, and, and, and uh, Nirbhaya, you know, such... Um, such extreme suffering ha has led to, you know, some changes in, 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 in the law, improvements in the law. So this law was passed in 2013, the Sposh Act. And now this is why, you know, why do we have a law that is only for women? Because the, high, the, the, the problem that was highlighted was about the problems that women are facing, such extreme problems, because Bhavi Bhavi was not a hooked up thing, not some imaginary something, a real case where there was complete injustice. And the, the, the country felt that you know, the people felt they went on in protest saying that something has to be done. It was a demand from the people that we must have a law like this to protect women. So that's why it is for women. But this is not to say that you know that, that, that there is unfortunately this this you know this view. Uh, and I I keep saying I keep trying to you know persuade people that there's nothing to be worried about. But then it's this thing is there that. This law is, you know, it's, it's, it's it, this is, look at how it's made women. The women are now, they're in part, they've got all, you know, they're, and they're going to oppress men that, you know, they, they'll misuse the law for something like, you know, I, the woman will not do her work well. And if you try to uh, reprimand her, then she'll say, oh, I'll, I'll file a case of sexual harassment. No, I can assure you it is very difficult for, I'm not saying that, you know, see, false cases happen. I mean, we are not the, we're not all Harish Chandras in this country or in this world. There is mischief and lies and deceptions in all aspects of life in filing income tax returns to saying that, you know, uh, someone else's property is my property. So false cases are there, you know, all in, 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 uh, in, in across the board. But this fear 
that you know now this law is going to you know uh, put men in a very bad position and the reason i say that this is this is a misconceived fear is you know for one thing um you know uh, if if, uh, if if we have to look at um, the, the reason I, i i would say that this is uh, completely fraud is because of this that if you look at the posh act itself has a provision for filing of false cases and for giving false evidence and this is one case you know you can really you can believe in the, the symbol that we have in our country this is the guiding force the truth will protect you the truth will out of the truth will protect you so if you are on the part of of the of truth you have nothing to fear if you have nothing to hide then you have nothing to fear so in fact under this law if if the internal committee finds if if there's a false case someone has filed a false case a woman has filed a false case or or she's giving false evidence this can be held against her she can be in fact given the same punishment as if as someone who has actually committed sexual harassment you know so depending on how serious the thing is if it is found that she has actually deliberately give made a false case just to you know cause harm to uh, to someone and she can be penalized for it so you don't have to worry it is not you know that you know you know she, they will not get away with it hmm so false cases don't fear that really at least not in posh yeah and but but this is also not to scare those who have a genuine case See, the thing is about truth we are trying to protect the, the truth in this country so if you if you the truth is on your side please don't be afraid if you have a genuine case also remember that just because you have not been able to prove your case it doesn't mean it's a false case at all false case means you knew it's a lie you cooked up the whole evidence and you did it just to make someone you look bad that's a false case then you are in trouble but that you filed a case you were not successful that's all right that's okay that you couldn't prove your case doesn't mean it's a false case yeah so if you have a if you have a case a genuine case you must complain uh, and if you have if you have not done anything wrong you don't have to worry hmm? so the thing really is is about this you know the reason i said that you know look this law it says protection of women but surely you see if you're if if you're a man and a man would you not be happy would you not feel safe that you know you know your your wife or your daughter your sister the women you you women friends you know that they are safe in their workplace of course it's important to you any man would be happy that he doesn't have to worry about the safety of the you know women who are important to him that they'll be safe in the workplace of course a, a man should be happy and let us not think that you know and, and, and no woman is is going to a uh, glory at you know uh, at, at, at a man being harassed uh, because you know if miss if 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 a man today a man is um, uh, falsely implicated that tomorrow the, for, uh, it could be someone's husband it could be someone's son brother so this is not we're in the same team here we're in the same it's the same boat huh? men and women we are in the same boat here so if if something is going to go only you know completely anti women it's it's bad for men as well huh don't think that something which harms women is not going it's going to harm men because which which man is there who doesn't have any women in his life and if something is completely anti men it's going to hurt women as well which woman is there who has no who, you know who has no man in the family or you know no no men uh, whom she's concerned about we not we don't live on separate planets so we are the same team here ha huh? so it's not a man versus woman thing at all and don't worry about false cases under posh okay because there's a provision the truth the truth is your defense if you are on the path of truth you don't have to worry for a posh case yeah so yeah i think let's go for assessment questions number 2 sunil please in the meantime if there are any questions i'll uh, i could take them um yes ma'am there are two questions Uh, ma'am just a sec uh, the question is now uh, live the link is live on the web link uh, in case you are not able to see it just refresh the web link you should be able to see that link to answer the questions okay um and i'm seeing refresh the page actually sunil you need to stress this every time there are many questions that we are not able to see the link so just ask them to refresh the link every time uh will do ma in fact i put it on the uh, uh, caption also okay uh, ma'am uh, some people are asking uh, i think they are students so they are asking that what about faculty discriminating between staff uh, between sorry between the class uh, students mm -hmm. by making them work mm -hmm. 
more or giving them duties uh, you know uh, beyond their uh, uh let's say subject or beyond their work guidelines so mm. will, will this okay. come under the Students are are a step ahead of me always. I mean, so I'll just be coming to that. So, so we'll just come to you know yeah. other forms of discrimination. Okay. Uh, yeah. And uh, we'll see that if it's not of a sexual nature, it will not be sexual harassment. Right. Though yes, I mean, although it was many years ago, I too was a student, and you know, <laughs> one can yeah, the one always has grouses against you know faculty, and some of them are not necessarily well founded. But we'll just come to that. Well, I'll, I'll just come to that. Sure. The thing is. Uh, all all problems in life we cannot make it a sexual harassment thing but a sexual harassment issue we have to deal with it as a sexual harassment issue yeah so if someone if some some faculty is maybe uh, i don't know giving too much work to do or maybe the discriminating uh, that would be an issue discrimination issue but it need not be a sexual harassment issue which i'll, I'll just come to in more detail Um, uh, ma'am, there is one question regarding a uh, healthcare professional harassing, sexually harassing patients in the name of mm-hmm. examination, and uh, and there are mm-hmm. other doctors who are witnessing this, and you know, oh. even the patient is experiencing it. So, what can be mm-hmm. um, done in such situations? Right. Oh, that's a serious thing, huh? I mean, you know, in all our rape laws and our sexual offences laws, you know. all those punishments the punishments are always much higher if it happens with uh in a hospital or in, or, or in in a place where you know uh, where there's necessarily a position of trust so if it's done by healthcare professionals the punishment is higher but this is in terms of criminal cases so here the sexual harassment occurring hmm, mm-hmm. then this is completely um, you know if the, the patient can certainly complain you know we'll see under this law how the patient can file a case or posh case before the internal committee against whoever is doing this uh but sometimes patients may may not be in a position to complain or maybe too afraid or they may not know the law so here it becomes incumbent on those who are there those who are seeing it they should help and step in because you know we, we, we don't want this thing see if this comes out in the press you know i mean uh of course it's aims and even it's looked up to by the whole country and even internationally but you know a case like this you know it it doesn't take long to defame an organization so let's take it as the onus is on everyone to ensure that there's prompt action you know um, in in in, 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 in a, any incident otherwise you just never know when something you know when a scandal can rock and you know you can destroy an org i i, I spoke about telka in, in the first uh, session in mm-hmm. you know, organizations can be finished because they have dealt with this case badly so and even if it's something of uh, you know sterling reputation like aims it has to be protected you have to protect that you have to fight for that reputation and that means even if a patient is not in a will probably not want to you know complain but uh, you know the all those who are within aims must take it upon themselves to highlight these problems and and ensure that there's some redress you have to step in to help each other otherwise really it doesn't take a long for uh, reputations to crumble um okay ma'am there is another question it's my favorite uh can you talk okay. about pseudo feminism yes <laughs> uh, this word pseudo no i find it very scary because it means different things to different people now what i i am assuming by the word pseudo feminism means someone who's not really a feminist but who acts like a feminist hmm. no i And don't I know i think it also, it also means that uh, i always see especially youth male youth have this concept of what is feminism and what is no they often mm. compare women who are like army women are good women example and probably uh, an actor or a model is not a good uh, example mm. so i think it more uh, it means uh, i think in that context okay or well, do they mean you know women who are seen to be taken too many liberties and they are maybe too yes. free or i don't i probably that is the thing see i the thing is see feminism to me it's very simple either you it you believe in the equality the full equality of men and women then you're a feminist yeah if you think women are not inferior to men then you're a feminist now when um, you know sometimes this thing that we have in in india is thing of you know like a lakshman rekha that is forever even now in the 21st century still with us uh, that you know we have you know it's the gender role that women should be doing this and they should not be doing anything beyond that and if they go beyond that if that is seen as you know in the name of freedom they are 
they're being pseudo feminists and doing things they should not be doing mm. maybe for instance they're not having i don't know na for i'm a single woman so you know sometimes that is seen as you know it it upsets people how are who who are you you think you don't need a man in your life how can you not having children or these are expectations now that is seen as pseudo feminism now what can i do you know i mean if if i i believe that men and women equally we have the right to decide whom to marry when to marry not to marry how many children not to have children now if this is seen as an excess of freedom what who decides that excess it, it surely each individual has we have the right to live our lives uh in in the way that best promotes our happiness right and how is if why should someone else get upset by that you know so if someone i mean if um uh it's if the only thing is if 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 you, if you, if i'm if we're living our lives as we believe is right it may be very different from someone else's view Yeah, but we, are, we are, but as, as long as I'm, we're not imposing it on other people, then how is it a problem for anyone else? Now we have to get beyond this thing of that um, uh, that Lakshman Rekha. The thing is, you know, the thing is, it's that now in the 21st century we're doing so many things that were not done in the past. No, so the rules, in a sense, um, if you ta- I would take my guidance from the Constitution of India, which says we, the people of India, we have given these equal rights to everybody. Yeah, Absolutely. and we are all free. to to live our lives as we please and if it if someone is living a life that doesn't please me then that means something is wrong with my expectation that i think people have to always fit in with my world view then i have to change my world view a little bit no so feminism for me i don't know what pseudo feminism is but feminism is that yes we are equal human beings that we are each human being men women third gender whatever we are all equal human beings and Yeah, whether you believe in a creator or not but the thing is we we have we have uh, we have magnificent value each human being has value and that to me is being a feminist that that we recognize that no one is inferior to those superior to the other and then if you that for me that is pseudo feminism someone who says that you know ah you know i'm a woman so you know men are inferior to me or i'm a woman so i'm inferior to men uh, then i find that is that is actually not feminism the pseudo word no i have never known what to do with it really Mm, yeah that's all we have for now the questions so if if the assessment is done we can continue further now great so let's just go on then uh we'll uh, okay let's look at um, understanding gender in the context of the workplace so we look at what is harassment at work i think there was a question similar to that what is harassment are all is sec- all harassment is it sexual harassment then we then we'll look at the whole thing of what is meant by sexual harassment let's look at harassment first huh so uh what kinds of harassment can occur in the workplace if you look at the workplace harassment so harassment which can occur in the workplace it is the unwelcome and sometimes unlawful conduct that demeans insults and offends an employee so when you're an employee you're working somewhere there are can have all kinds of problems you can have an a, an awful boss who's always behaving badly with you you can have there are many kinds of problems there you know you 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 you're getting your uh, this you maybe you overworked you're not getting the you know uh, your, your salary comes a bit late you're not getting the your leave isn't being sanctioned or whatever there are all kinds of problems but workplace harassment is a sexual harassment is a part is a type of workplace harassment all workplace harassment is not sexual harassment and we should not overburden that you know all any harassment case cannot come and cannot go to the internal committee okay but sexual harassment cases absolutely must be dealt with by them so so this is one sexual harassment is 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 a type of harassment that can occur in the workplace so what are the kinds of harassments that that is not sexual harassment we'll see the sexual harassment cases later on but but some things like you know for instance uh treating a person badly because of their age you know saying someone is uh, you know not very young looking so you think oh will you be able to work on a computer or you know uh, or, or some, this person is so young how will this person do a surgery you know you just fresh out of college you know when, or, or someone is so old will you be able to see you know how will so this is age age related uh, harassment can also be harassment someone treating you badly because of your age are you too young or you're too old that's harassment that's not sexual harassment disability happens a lot so when we look at a person with disability either a person in a wheelchair or someone you know who has a visual impairment or or is deaf we think 
this person, you know, uh, can't hear, so can't do anything. Can't walk, so can't do anything. How can you have a doctor who can uh, be in a wheelchair? But you can have a doctor. You have had doctors who've been excellent doctors uh, in, 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 in wheelchairs. And so you can't, you know, you, a doctor has to keep hearing this, you know, that, you know, uh, I don't want to be treated by you because, you know, uh, that's, that's a harassment because of disability, but that's not sexual harassment. Uh, you can have oh, a ghastly uh, colleague like this who's always yelling and screaming, you know, uh, behaving basically in a very uh, offensive way all the time. Very, but, but this need not be sexual harassment. If, if there's no sexual basis here, a person like this may be yelling and screaming at, you know, uh, at, 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 at men, nothing, no, no, no sexual connotation at all. But it's it's a kind of harassment. You can have harassment on, on because of you know the the region one is from, or, or because of one's religion. So you know one is you know always making fun of a person's religion or the other community. That's that's also harassment. Yeah. But all this is not sexual harassment. You know because of one's race or uh, so. Uh, but sexual harassment is different. Huh? So you can have workplace harassment, but if but if for it to be called sexual harassment it has to meet certain criteria, which we'll come to now. This is really a key here. The sexual harassment, you know, there are the next two, this slide and the next slide, it's the key to this, what is sexual harassment? So it is unwelcome, sexually determined behavior. I think it has, it has to be unwelcome. And, uh, that is unwelcome and sexually determined. So anything unwelcome, but if it, 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 all this has to come into thing, it has to be sexually de determined behavior, right? And unwelcome to whom? Unwelcome to the woman. There are two things here. That the woman was made to feel uncomfortable. She was uncomfortable with some sexually determined behavior. That would be sexual harassment in the workplace. And if you ask which woman, it would be that particular woman who is complaining about sexual harassment, the, the woman who was subject to certain kind of behavior. And not all women are the same. You know, some women like pink saris, some women like blue saris, some people, some women don't like saris at all, and some women only wear saris. So there are all kinds, right? So here's the thing. So one woman, you know, the same action, she may be okay with it. So for instance, you know, uh, a colleague may say, oh, okay, you know, uh, um, uh, Radha, you're looking great. Yeah, and she will say, thank you, and she's happy with it. And uh, someone, uh, and, and, and uh, the, the, the same person tells uh, Madhuri, Madhuri, you're looking great. And she says, and she gets upset, you know, who is this person? Why should this person say, you know, uh, comment on my dress? Yeah. So Madhuri may feel uncomfortable, although Radha was not uncomfortable. And sometimes even the same, uh, let us say the same uh, the Radha, when uh, person X said, Radha, you're looking great, she didn't mind. Uh, but when the lift man said, ah, Radha ma'am, you're looking very good, then she minded. Hmm? The taxi driver said, Radha ma'am, you're looking very nice, then she was upset. So see, it still depends. You know, the same woman, the thing is, if she feels uncomfortable, then that is sexual harassment. So the thing is, it's not about what you, as a man, or as a man or as a woman, it's not what I intend, but it's how the other person feels. I have to be sensitive to what you know, makes the other person, uh, you know, um, uh, affects the um, other person. I have to be sensitive to how that other person uh, is feeling, you know? So I have to be respectful to those around me, yeah? So there are some examples of sexual harassment. The, 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 this is what it includes. And when you have the word inclusion, includes in any law, it means that it is this, all these things should follow. No, anything which is not on this list could also be sexual harassment. So it's a very broad definition. So this uh, physical contact, but in, in all the examples, you've got to keep these things in mind. It has to be unwelcome, uh, sexually determined, and unwelcome to the woman. Hmm. So it's physical contact, which is sexually determined, unwelcome to the woman, then it, it could be sexual harassment. If it is welcome physical contact, no problem. There are so always questions. Can I shake hands with the woman? Can I embrace my, you suppose I've come, I'm seeing my colleague after, uh, you know, uh, many days, and we are very good friends, you know, we we go out, go out together, etc. Can I uh, embrace her or him when I'm uh, back from work? See, it all depends on whether that person, that woman will find it comfortable or not. If she's comfortable with it and everybody else is comfortable, then that's fine. But if she's not comfortable with it, then it's a ma major problem. So you be careful about physical contact. 
it, it makes sure that it is respectful and that it does not upset the other person. And like I said, different women may, may react differently. So we have to be alert. Huh? And it's not so difficult human beings. We are, we are very intelligent beings. We can guess. Even children can guess. You know, they, they can guess that this mama liked this and papa didn't like that. You know? uh, we have the, that the radar is there. If we are sensitive, we are alert, we will know this person didn't like what I did. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this to this person. Somehow we get that vibe. So, so uh, don't impose physical contact and, uh, to make a woman feel uncomfortable. Sexual advances. Sexual advances are fine so long as they're not unwelcome. But if it's unwelcome to the woman, then there's a problem, right? Because this is not to say that, you know, you can't have romantic relations in an organization. You can. Now, in some companies, there are actually some companies, very few though, who are so strict that they will not let you even, you know, have a relationship uh, with your colleagues there. So if if uh, two colleagues want to get married uh, or, or be together, one of them has to leave the company. <laughs> and so. That is not the law in, in India. Yeah, It's not, yes, you can fall. It's a wonderful thing. You should fall in love. Wonderful. We celebrate love and marriage. Very good. Yeah, go ahead. But don't sexually harass. You know, No one is saying that you can't. Of course, go ahead and love. Love is a glorious thing. But sexual harassment is not. And sexual harassment is definitely not love. Because sexual harassment is about harassing the other person, making the other person feel bad. It's about you know, taking. Love is about giving. There's... There's no, uh, almost no common point here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sexual, a demand or request for sexual favors. This is, if, if it makes the woman uncomfortable, will certainly be sexual harassment. And as a country, many of us, we've been, you know, we've, even from the, from so many, been brought up on such a bad uh, staple of some, you know, some of our movies are so wrong in their messaging, you know, where, you know, the, the, the hero supposedly keeps on pestering this woman and then finally she actually falls in love with him. And it doesn't really happen in real life, you know, so we, we, we have these funny ideas. Just, so don't go by what some movies are showing. If you're going to keep demanding or keep begging and pestering a woman, uh, chances are she's not going to like it and you will end up in a sexual harassment soup. Yeah? And then making sexually colored remarks. Now this is uh, th this is this is a, a very subtle and the thing is sexually colored remarks is it's it's that um, remarks which saying something which makes the woman uncomfortable, but it it, it it has a sexual connotation. Yeah. So whether it is something about you know her her body, the way she looks. Now here again, see if you're if it's a close friend or you're sure the woman won't mind, she's comfortable with it, then that's okay. But don't take a risk. If you're not sure that your woman colleague, you know, will not respond well, then for God's sake, don't say it, you know? So, uh, for instance, I mean, there, there, there was this case where, um, you know, it's, it seems a, such a simple thing, you know, but uh, a, a, a female woman executive, uh, normally in, uh, she used to wear, um, you know, uh, yeah, salwar kameez in, 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 in the office, but once she was wearing a sari, it was a major function. And then some gentleman, one of her male colleagues said, ah, you know, you look much better in a sari. I think it really, you know, gives you, you know, makes you look, you know, and he, then he left, he, he didn't finish the sentence. And she felt very uncomfortable about that, you know. So this basically, he, uh, he, one may say, look, I was just praising her, saying that she looks so great in a sari. So what is wrong with that? But she felt uncomfortable, you know. So it, it may be a seem, seemingly innocuous thing, like you're looking great uh, in a sari. You know? uh, so you have to be comfortable because a woman may see it, you know, why, why are you commenting? Because we never tell men, oh, you look so great in this shirt or, you know, what lovely trousers you're wearing or you know, this. We don't say that. So then, then, then if some women may feel, you know, you're, you're objectifying me, you know, if you look at me, look at my work, don't, don't be commenting on my appearance, etc. So these are in a sexually colored remarks. There are some words which it's always better not to use, you know. So certainly, if you, uh, it, 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 it could also be in terms like gestures, you know, whistling or, you know, uh, you, you can whistle. It's fine if, if it's, it's in a safe enough place. But with what song you whistle? It's a romantic song, and then you know, it, it, it could lead to misunderstandings. It makes a woman feel uncomfortable. Just don't do it. You know? There are some uh, instances. So, for instance, uh, you know, uh, uh, there was uh, like I've, I've mentioned this. Uh, uh, about um, a, a woman who had just come back from, she was treated for breast cancer, and her boss made, made you know, he said that, look, I was being concerned. I was asking her how she was. Is her family life okay now that, you know, she had a, a breast was, uh, was almost totally removed? So I was just concerned about, you know, 
I was just asked, I, I meant well, but she didn't like it at all. It was it was a major case of sexual harassment in the workplace. Yeah? So we have to be careful in, in, in things we say, let us be respectful. And what we would not tell a man, let's not tell a woman unless you're very sure, you know, very sure relationship, you, you know, that you know this person will not be uncomfortable. Showing pornography, oh my God, this should never happen at all. In the workplace, don't. What pornography, first of all, you should not be watching. But if you do uh, watch pornography, for God's sake, do it at home. Don't come to the workplace and do that. You know, uh, in fact, um, uh, you know, whether it's on your laptop, or on the phone, whatever. And, and see, in this situation, even if it's two people, you know, exchanging, enjoying some obscene, some pornographic pictures, they're not, they're not really showing it to this woman, but she can complain of sexual harassment because it's affecting the whole work environment. So keep, don't do pornography at all huh, in, in the workplace. And then this long definition goes on and on. So there's any other unwelcome, yeah? Whether physical, verbal, or nonverbal, any conduct of sexual nature. So, so physical, so sexual harassment must have a sexual basis there, okay? Otherwise, it, will, it, it could be some other kind of, it could be racial harassment, it, it could be disability harassment, but it, it would not be uh, sexual harassment. And uh, the sexual harassment, it could be direct, it could be indirect. Uh, it, uh, so it's, you, you have all these things, could be any of these, and then you've got so many et cetera, because it could be something else also, you know. Suppose you know, something which has not been mentioned in, in the law, but could also amount to sexual harassment if the woman, uh, if, if there was sexually de determined behavior and the woman was uncomfortable about it, and that would amount to sexual harassment. And then there are some situations that law also goes further on to explain this, that see, if in, um, you know, if any of these things happen, if, if in connection with any act of sexual harassment, then this, these would also amount to sexual harassment. So if there is either implied or explicit, if there's a promise of preferential treatment in employment, huh? so meaning, for instance, that, you know, if you maybe, um, uh, allow physical contact with me or you know you grant me a sexual favor uh, you will get a promotion or the reverse threat of detrimental that you know maybe you will lose your job or you will not get that promotion or you will not be sanctioned leave or whatever mm -hmm. or there's a threat about uh, your employment status so you won't get the job at all if you want a job you i will you will get the job only only if you do these things for me mm -hmm. all this would also amount to sexual harassment then there's this interference with work. Hmm. Interference with work is often mistaken for supervision, management. If you're on a, uh, in, a, in a managerial role, you, of course, you must supervise, you must guide those who are uh, under your watch. You should mentor them, you should, that is how people grow as professionals. Hmm. Uh, so if someone if you someone's done something wrong, you correct them that this is not how you should have done that, right? But that is not interference. Interference with work is sexual harassment. Interfering is she's doing her work and you are there trying to create problems. That is interference. That is not supervision or management. So interference with work would amount to sexual harassment if it is occurring with a, any other act of sexual harassment. And look at this, creating an, an environment that is hostile, offensive, intimidating. Mm -hmm. This would also be sexual harassment. There was an, a, a case where this was a few years ago where uh, it, it, it was an agency which was dealing with, you know, something of a law enforcement. They had never had a woman officer at a high level because never headed by a woman before. Mm -hmm. So when they got from outside a woman to head that agency, all the men, they were very unhappy and they decided that they would not cooperate with her at all. Mm -hmm. So whatever direction she would, she would give, uh, they would just always find reasons, oh, this can't be done, or you know, this has never happened, this won't work. So that was creating a hostile environment when you're just not cooperating, right? So, or humiliating treatment which could affect her health and safety uh, would also be sexual harassment in the workplace. Okay, so that's a whole lot of things, sexual harassment, yeah, and it's uh, a part of, it's a type of harassment, but not all harassment is sexual harassment. Well, sexual harassment definitely is sexual harassment, and sexual harassment, it's, just, it's a very long, very broad definition. 
yes, we'll have the next uh, link for questions. And any other questions, uh, Burgli? Somia, if you're there. Okay, uh, just a uh, uh, humble request to all viewers and participants. Uh, the question link is now live on the web link. Uh, in case you are not able to see, you are able to see, welcome to AIMS Global Webinar. Just refresh your web page, the link should be visible. Uh, Ma'am, just, uh, just uh, asking that, uh, how does this particular law uh, uh, comes into picture if there is uh, uh, issues between students, like sexual harassment cases between students, like students, mm -hmm. students and then teacher and student? Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, teacher and students, very easy to answer because see that where the teacher is, that is the teacher's workplace, right? Mm. Yes. It's the teacher's workplace. If the teacher is causing sexual harassment, then that is very clearly a case of sexual harassment in the teacher's workplace. Mm. Now, when it comes to students, I mean, there are two views on this. So one way is, one theory, one way of seeing it is that even though they're students, it's seen as it is someone's workplace. So work is happening there, right? So um, so this, would, uh, this could also be taken as a... Um, a sexual harassment case, but among students, you see the, the difficulty with uh, with, um, uh, with in most places you would have some um, uh, some some sort of a center, something which would you know deal with student related issues. Okay, so there are two views on this. So, see, if it's a teacher, very clearly sexual harassment case, you inform the internal committee. Now, if it's a case involving two students only. There is one view of thought that look, it's it's still a workplace and it has happened. And and if you have students, uh, uh, you know, um, sexually harassing other students, it is going to affect that workplace. So that could also be taken up by the internal. Group. That is, and because it's it's uh, it, the definition is very broad, uh, that is certainly one way that uh, we can see that. Yeah. So, but it, it it will also depend on the kind of harassment it is, how serious it is, because uh, the age of the student also. Of course, we are above 18. I'm assuming they'll all be above 18, so that we won't have to go into those uh, uh, complications. Because when it comes to children, uh, to students in, in a school, then because of the age factors, then there are other mechanisms. You know, so as soon as uh, the, the sexual harassment of uh, someone below 18, uh, male or female, then there's a different um, uh, you know setup there. So that that uh, we needn't go into all that now. So if there is harassment by a teacher, uh, please do go ahead. Even if it's by if it's by a student, I, it may be better better served if I don't know if, if there is. Uh, it depends. I'm not sure how the setup is in with Ames, but if you have uh, uh, another um, sort of uh, uh, redress mechanism among students, maybe you can try that, or else just go to the internal committee because it, it can be argued. You know, it's, it seems a bit of a stretch, but it is a workplace, right? It is a workplace. People are working in, in, in this college. So there's harassment occurring in this particular college. So it, it could come under, in the broad sense, to, it would come under sexual harassment in the workplace. Yes, but, and also because I think the PG students in, in medical colleges, they are both mm -hmm. employees and students because I think Absolutely. they, they, they I receive the type Absolutely, absolutely. Um, right now, there are only these questions. So if the assessment is completed. Um, OK, there is okay. one question that come, came up. Um, what about laws where the same gender people promote some and humiliate some on the basis of personal bias? I think. Uh, same gender. Hmm. So the Porsche Act is looking at protecting of women. Now, the thing is here, uh, I think since this time, uh, let, let's talk about this now. See, there is this parliament law, the Porsche Act, and this is an act of parliament, which is applicable to all organizations all over the country, private sector, public sector, whatever. Now, within each organization, public or private, there should actually be a separate policy. Which can be exactly, which can be based on, uh, you know, it, it, it could be a complete re replica of the existing act, or it can be something in addition. So now there are many companies which and NGOs and some uh, organizations which have uh, they have a separate policy and they've actually gone into details like we made it gender neutral. Like in some companies, you can actually complain even if you're a man, 
you can file a case of sexual harassment because that company has a particular policy, a separate one, you know, which is based on this, but it has gone a step further than the, uh, the Posh Act. Right? So one way to take, if, if your organization, now I think with, now with AIMS, for instance, you're going strictly by the Posh Act, so then there's no question of, you know, man complaining, right? Uh, but if you if you join, uh, it depends if, if, if you're in some private hospital later on, or if you suppose you go abroad in, in, in many countries, you know, it's, it's gender neutral. And then, you know, so there, it, 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 you, you, sexual harassment is a problem everywhere. Huh? You may not have the Bosch Act in the US, but you'll have another, another law in the US. So you can't say I'm out of India so I can, you know, sexually harass people. You know, there will always be some law governing you. So in some uh, organizations, it is, the, the, the path is made clear that even if you're, harass, if you're a man, you're harassed by a man, it, this is where you should go. But if you go strictly by the Porsche Act, uh, and so for AIMS, like there's no specific policy saying otherwise. So here, look, if you're a woman, if you're being harassed by a woman, you can go, to the, it's the same provision. If you're harassed by a man, it's the same thing. If you are a man and you are being harassed by either a woman or by another man, you know, the, the, the protection, uh, the, the legal provisions for men uh, for sexual assault of men is a little weak in the well, I won't say it's weak, but it's, it's weaker compared to the provisions for women. Right? I mean, if you look at the rape laws of women, it's, it's very comprehensive and covers so many situations. But for men, there's just you know, if, if you're below 18, you've got POXO, same thing for boys and girls, and that's a very strong law for sexual offenses against children. So that's very strong law. If you're above 18 as a man, you have this, you have very hardly any section. You've got one section 377, for instance, you know which uh, penalizes, um, uh, you know, um, forced sexual uh, relations between, you know, if, if it's consensual, that's perfectly okay. That, that's not a problem. But if so there's not much, you know, in, in terms of, uh, I mean, if, if, if a man faces sexual assault, he can certainly, he, he can take the uh, course of criminal uh, law. But he can, or if he's facing harassment, he can always, he will not under Porsche be able to go to the internal committee, but he can certainly go uh, he can report to his HR department that this is the harassment that he is facing. Yeah? And I would, we can go a step further, you know, because the law already develops because someone takes a new step in a new direction. You see, the, the law grows when someone pushes the boundaries. So there could be a, a case where a man files a, you know, um, it, it says that, you know, although the Porsche Act is for women, maybe, you know, but we have to, uh, you know, also account for harassment of men. You, you, you can, you can explore that. Certainly, one can explore that. But so for men right now, you can go to uh, the HR. You can't file under Porsche strictly, unless you have a gender neutral policy. But if it's a case of criminal assault, sexual assault, yes, certainly you 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 can go to the uh, police, and you should. You absolutely must. So many men also don't report that because they get embarrassed. That's the. I think a lot of uh, male students here are having these issues uh, because uh, regarding uh, this law being gender, not gender neutral, and mm. some are wanting that there should be CCTVs installed in the areas to avoid false allegations. So I think I think you have uh, made yourself clear, ma'am, that this act. Yeah. Is Why? Uh, yeah. You know. You know. Let me assure the young, all the young men there. Look. You know. It's. It's. If you. If you're a woman, and you file a case of sexual harassment in the workplace, I can assure you, it's not an easy ride, huh? And because as soon as you file the case, your colleagues will start saying, you know, don't you know? Why are you filing this case? It'll ruin your career, etc. So there are women who have. You know, I, I know of at least two, this is of course corporate sector, I'm not talking about, uh, yeah. where they have, <clears throat> after filing this case, she didn't get redress because the law was a bit weak then. Uh, then she was so harassed in the work, she had to resign and then she, it was it becomes very difficult to find another job. So, you know, it's, it's not a cakewalk for women. Women will not file cases unless they really need, they get a lot of flack from home as well. You know, the husbands and the parents will ask, how come it's happened to you? You have hundreds of women in that place and it will only happen to you. You must have done something wrong. Neighbors will talk. This will happen. It's not easy. So please don't assume that, you know, women are, you know, just waiting to be, you know, filing these, these cases. And, and look at this false case thing. I mean, they can be punished. They can lose their jobs if they file a false case, deliberate false case. I mean, 
it, 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 it is as serious as actually committing sexual harassment, right? So don't worry about that. And this thing about see, CCTVs and all, you know, I mean, I don't know whether you want CCTVs everywhere. I'm sure it helps, but you know, but you know, we've seen with things like in robberies and all that, you no, know, CCTV is supposed to help. The day the robbery happens, and the, the recordings also disappear. So I don't know. But, I mean, the thing is, don't get. Let's not turn. Uh, Let's not get paranoid that you know uh, women are just waiting to you know trap us because you have a provision again of uh, false cases. There will be there will be a lot of trouble if they are trapping you, and and you have to have some confidence in the internal committee and the legal processes. You know, they're not a bunch of fools, you know. I mean, the internal committee members. If you go to court, <clears throat> I mean, it, we we can understand from the evidence on record, no, that. That is this thing mischievous or is it in is, is it an act of revenge or you know so I mean uh, have a little bit of confidence in the intelligence of people who are holding <coughs> positions of you know of, of judging a case yeah so it's don't don't let that scare you now if the truth is not on your side huh if you are busy harassing then yes you jolly well be scared then yes you should be scared. But if you are not, if you are, if you are respectful to others, you should not have this problem. I don't see why you should worry about that. Mm. Um, there is uh, one question regarding whether mental harassment can be um, reported under this, because uh, what she is saying, the woman who has asked this question, is, she, is mm. saying that mental harassment is also. Uh, more than equal to sexual harassment, like the gravity of it is more than equal. So, like uh, why it is being ignored and why it is not taking under this purview. Hmm. So I don't know whether this uh, see mental harassment. Like I said, you see there are all kinds of harassment in the workplace. Now, all harassment will not be sexual harassment. If the mental harassment is because of some sexual behavior. And that is why she is, you know, mentally harassed. And yes, it would be sexual harassment. If it's purely mental harassment, for instance, maybe uh, the person is giving up. You know, uh, the workload is very great, or I don't know what what exactly would be meant by. See, if it does, if, if for, for it to be sexual harassment, it must fit in within sexual harassment, right? Which means there must be some sexually determined behavior which was unwelcome. Now, if it is, see, there is. There is no point in bringing everything into the purview of sexual harassment just because we have a workshop here today, right? Imagine if tomorrow people are not getting salaries, they'll again go to you know the internal committee. Then somebody's not getting promotion. Then you know then how will this internal committee function if they're going to do all the duties of HR? Then, then what is the HR for? You know, so uh, then we don't. If you overburden one mechanism, then the mechanism will collapse and it will not be able to deal with sexual harassment cases also, right? So for harassment, which is not sexual harassment, go to HR, try some other avenue. HR, HR mechanism should be strong. I'm sure it would be in, in a government institution that you would be able to place your grievances. And I'm sure there are methods of, you know, you have these annual these assessment reports, et cetera. I'm sure it makes a, a difference, but don't bring everything into sexual harassment. Otherwise you, you, will, you will compromise the system, it, it, it will collapse. So don't, don't put everything here. I'm not denying the importance of mental harassment. It, it can be very um, uh, hurtful and very damaging, as can be uh, you know, age discrimination or disability. They can all be very damaging, R racial slurs, very damaging. I'm, I'm not undermining that. Hmm. What I'm saying is the avenue for redress has to be respected. You know, with a different avenue, go by that avenue. Don't put everything in, in one, uh, you know, in the internal committee. Or you will overwhelm that mechanism. Yeah. Um, and that's it for, for the from the questions. Um, and maybe we can continue further if the assessment is over. I think I suppose it should be, you know, they were just very brief questions for the assessment. Assessment is uh, right. So we'll just go on then. Now let's look at this thing of um, understanding gender. Uh, in the context of workplace. So this is about prevention of sexual harassment. What should I do if I experience or witness sexual harassment? And are there protocols to keep in mind for reporting, etc.? So let's look at the procedures. Hmm. Uh, to look at these procedures, there are some terms we must be familiar with. One is the thing of workplace. This is important. What is meant by a workplace? Because it's sexual harassment in the workplace, right? 
So this it includes any place visited by the employee arising out of or in the course of employment. Huh? So wherever the employee goes for work, that becomes workplace. It, it includes transportation provided by the employer for this journey. So, so for medical professionals, I would assume, so you know, certainly the hospital or the clinic, wherever you're working is very definitely the workplace. If you are holding a health camp somewhere, sometimes you have these, you know, uh, that would also become a workplace. Suppose you're going for a, a conference, which is, you know, to, uh, upgrading skills or whatever, that also becomes your workplace. So I'll give an example. So for instance, if, if, there, if there's a conference somewhere in, in uh, maybe in, in Delhi about, you know, how to deal with this, I don't know, UK strain of whatever coronavirus or whatever it is. So there's some, so you go by from your hospital, you take the flight, you come to Delhi, you stay in a hotel here, the conference is here. This hotel, that place also becomes your workplace, the plane. That also becomes your work because you're there because of your work. Wherever you go, because of your work becomes your workplace. So I don't know if doctors are doing home visits, <coughs> home visits. If a doctor does a home visit, then the house the of the patient will also be the workplace. So wherever you go, because of your work is your workplace. And any sexual harassment that may occur in the workplace will be sexual harassment in the workplace. So that's workplace, it's a very broad definition. And here again, you see the word it has includes. <clears throat> Whenever in law you find the word includes, it means that it's all these things and also anything else that is not here. It means it's a very broad definition. Yeah. Then look at a grieved woman. <clears throat> a grieved woman is the, per the woman <coughs> who can complain. So is a woman of any age she could be even a girl, a young girl or a child. Whether employed or not, doesn't have to be employed. Could be someone who has come to visit a patient in the hospital. Yeah? But if she alleges sexual harassment by the respondent, the term we use is respondent here. <clears throat> in the Porsche Act, we don't use the word accused because accused is the word we use for criminal cases. This is not a criminal law. The Porsche Act is not a, a criminal law. Right? So we don't use the word accused, we use the word respondent. So we don't use the language of criminal law there. And it's important, so this, this aggrieved woman doesn't have to be an employee. So even if she's not working in that workplace, but she experienced sexual harassment there, that will be sexual harassment in the workplace, right? So suppose someone has, um, uh, some. suppose this girl has gone to see her aunt uh, in the, um, uh, you know, in the I don't know ICU or wherever, and she experiences sexual harassment, then she can file a case here. Yeah? Or even if she's someone who's gone to the OPD, she's not even uh, you know a, an inpatient. Uh, she she is she, something happens to her in this workplace, it would be sexual harassment in the workplace. This complaint would go to the internal committee. Yeah. If we look at um, Employee. Employee, again, it's a very broad term. Mm -hmm. So anyone who's on a regular basis, temporary basis, someone employed just for one day, ad hoc, daily, could be a daily wager. You know, someone you, who's come to maybe an electrician who came to fix the lights for one day, maybe someone who's working on the generator, could be the plumber who's just come for a few minutes, whether it's directly or through some agency, whether it's paid or voluntary could be an intern, a trainee, et cetera. So all these would come under the term employee. It's a very broad term, yeah? So even for, so for instance, suppose this, this girl I spoke about, this girl, she has been, uh, she says she was harassed by an intern, someone who's interning in, in, in or, or a trainee in, in Ames Papal. It would be a case for Ames Papal to take care of, yeah? Because that person is an employee. Respondent is a person. The law is very clear. It's, uh, anyone, a person against whom the aggrieved woman has made a complaint. So the respondent could be a woman. The respondent could be a man. The, 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 the aggrieved person under the Porsche Act can only be a woman. And this woman, I would also argue, it, it includes the whole umbrella of uh, uh, women. So whether a, a trans woman, I think, would, should come here. But unless you have a policy which specifically is gender neutral, which, uh, you know, says that this is for men as well, as well as for trans persons, for all people, uh, it just becomes um, you know, a little difficult for men, therefore, to, to, to complain. But, but 
respondent can be men or a man or a woman. Yeah. Right, so that's um, uh, some important terms that we have to be aware of. Uh, if we look at, you know, how do you complain? What happens if, so we've seen what sexual harassment in the workplace is. If anything like that happens, what do we do? How do we complain? So there's any aggrieved woman. So whoever has actually faced this problem, an aggrieved woman, and she, she can be aggrieved by, because for her to be aggrieved, what should have happened is that there should have been some sexually determined behavior, which she felt was unwelcome. So that becomes a, a reason to complain. So she's an aggrieved woman. She can complain to the, uh, she has to go to the intern. It was called the ICC before Internal Complaints Committee, but now it's, been, it's called the Internal Committee, the IC. And uh, she, the best thing is to put this in writing because what follows is is like a it's like a legal process, you know. So you can't have you know legal processes in the air, and you know, so it has to be in writing. And where for some reason, if she can't write, and the internal committee members will help her to put that in writing. Now there is a time limit here. We can't come after ten years and say, oh, you know, this thing happened to me ten years ago. Question me, what were you doing in all these ten years? Now, in serious cases like rape, etc., the courts have held that, you know, delay in filing FIR is okay. You can have delays because, you know, for very many reasons, because of stigma, etc., you know, the courts are not very strict on timelines for sexual offenses. So it's also good, be, I don't think the IC should also be strict here, but, but th there is a timeline here that, you know, you should file within three months or an additional three months, a total six months. So if you can't file within three months, you get a further extension of another three months, but then there should be reasons why this extension is given. You must have good reason, not that, oh, I didn't feel like it, or I felt those are not excuses. There should be some good reason why you couldn't file within those three months, right? And, uh, and the thing is, the, this time limit, is sometimes it's, it's not just a one-off incident. Hmm? Sometimes it's a series of incidents, same thing happening again and again, or you know, you know, there could be many incidents. So something happens in January, again in February, again in March. So this three months, you will start counting from the last incident, not the first one, right? And uh, and so three months in addition, you can get another three months of, uh, if, if your delay is condoned. Yeah. So when you when you file the uh, complaint, you know, so for if you if you um, what's good, what helps is. It's good to have the information at hand because the internal committee has to come to some conclusion. So, so when this happens with you, uh, you should make a note because later on you'll forget what happened, when it happened, who was there. You know, all these things, it's good to make a note, you know. And it helps you also write the uh, complaint later on. Uh, what date was it? When did it happen? Who else was there? Because later on you'll forget for sure, yeah. So it's good to make a note when you uh, write all this down. And um, yeah, uh, so you will complain to, um, this is the internal committee of Amos Popal. So you have all these details. I think you it's there also in your brochure. So you have all the details here. So it's all very clear. Uh, I, I think the ideal method is an email because when you write an email, you have the discipline to also you put it down in words, you're typing it out and so you, your, your thoughts become clearer. It's easier for the internal committee to work on it. But in, in emergency, you can, of course, you can always call. So there's, it's not the, the, the strict protocol isn't about how you get the information. Uh, the thing is that you must, you just reach out and you will get that help. Right? When you can make a call, it's fine. But ultimately it has to be in writing and uh, this is, it's, it's easier to process. <clears throat> so this is the internal committee. And I, um, when I, I can't help. I'm, I'm, I'm saying this. When I, that I, I'm, I've really been struck by the, um, by the uh, dynamism of this of the committee. You know, the chairperson and all the others. When there's this level of commitment here, so I think that you should, you know, uh, all participants. I think you should feel safe uh, that it's that you will be taken care of if you if you do uh, if, if there is a case, a genuine case, and you want to uh, complain about it. Yeah. You, you should do that, in fact, uh, so that you make sure that the workplace is free of sexual harassment. <clears throat> now, if a woman cannot file the case herself, now this could be either, you know, in, in extreme support because of her death or some physical incapacity or some mental incapacity. In that case, you can have a relative or a friend or a co-worker, or some women's commission member, you know, someone who knows about this, you know, could actually, uh, you know, uh, give the um, 
uh, file the complaint on her behalf if she can't do it directly. Uh, now, there, there's something called the local committee, local complaints committee or the local committee, where this is set up by the um, government. Hmm. So uh, you would have to go, if, if the complaint is against your employer, then you should go, uh, you have to file the case in the local committee because then your internal committee is not supposed to deal with the case against the employer. The employer is the one who heads with the overall, the ultimate uh, head of the uh, organization of the institution. Now, when you file a complaint, so you've given this in writing, and uh, now there is a provision called conciliation. Yeah. And this conciliation is just to let you know that, you know, it's not necessary that, you know, if it's, if it's not a very serious, no, 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 I mean, all matters would be serious. If it's not a very complex matter, then you may be willing to go for a settlement or for a compromise, the one who's complaining. So here's what you feel the complainant, you know, what you can suggest is because it can only happen if you, if the complainant wants it, you can suggest to the internal uh, committee that look, I mean, I'm open to a compromise. That this is what happened to me and I all I want is this. So in so many cases, the women are just saying this happened, it should not happen again. Just, I want them to just apologize, you know? So in, in, in cases like this, it makes a lot of sense to actually have a compromise. And so if the parties agree, the respondent, the complaint, complainant says, look, I want that you apologize, or, or I want that the respondent should maybe, uh, you know, um, maybe will not uh, be my, um, uh, prepare my reports anymore, or, or will not be the same ward as me, or whatever, whatever the terms and conditions are, if both parties are agreeable, then, the, you know, the, the, then there'll be a, like a settlement. And then you don't have to have a whole case. The matter is compromised. But here's, you cannot, can't have a monetary settlement. Huh? Please, this sexual harassment is, is, is a problem. It is never a lottery. Huh? Or oh, sexual harassment, so now if you give me 10 lakhs, I'll settle the case. That's a very bad thing. You cannot allow that to happen. Huh? So no monetary settlement. But if the parties can agree that the matter can be compromised, and it, it just uh, is taken care of more quickly. That's conciliation. It's not necessary. If you don't want conciliation, you don't have to do it at all. It will only happen if, if the complainant is willing to and wants to do this. That's conciliation, okay? And then, see, so you file the case, then if you want conciliation, if it works, great, then the matter stops there. But suppose you don't want conciliation or the conciliation didn't work, then you have the inquiry will begin. The internal committee will start the inquiry and um, uh, so during the inquiry, also as an inter, because it will take some time, right, for the inquiry to take place. In the meantime, the internal committee has the power to give necessary orders to make sure that the com complainant is uh, is safe, that the whole procedure is, uh, you know, it basically is it goes smoothly. So whether, for instance, it is, uh, you know, if, if the complainant says, if, if the complainant requests that, look, she she needs a transfer, she can't work in in in, in the same place because because of the, of the trauma or whatever, she needs to uh, transfer or or you know for the for the interim or that the um, uh, respondent should be transferred out, you know, or or if it's, if it's really you know she, there's this tremendous trauma, she may need leave to recover. Sometimes if there's physical injuries or whatever, uh, if she needs time to, if she can even be given paid leave up to three months, yeah. So all these things she can apply, the, the uh, complainant can apply for this if, if she requires. And if the IC thinks it's reasonable, it can be granted. Then the employer is, it will, will uh, so these recommend the IC, if they think it, it's reasonable, they can uh, say that they tell the employer to, uh, that they can recommend these to the employer. The employer is supposed to then implement it and inform the internal committee that this has been complied with. Yeah? Now, when the so the inquiry will go on, and see during inquiry, the thing is there will be the the internal committee has to be it has to act impartially. It will hear both sides. So don't worry, all the young men there, don't worry that oh they will only hear the women. No, they'll hear they will hear both sides. If they hear only one side, then the problem that the inquiry will come to nothing. It will be what they call it vitiated. Mm. And also it it will they will hear both sides, and then they, they they're supposed to complete this within you know, roughly ninety days. And then they'll send the report within another ten days. Now, both all the, both the parties will get copies of the uh, of the inquiry. And the thing is, now, if the uh, internal committee finds 
that the allegations were not proved. That see how will the, the this is what, how will the internal committee come to know whether sexual harassment occurred or not? If there's a case, an allegation, for instance, that suppose some nurse says that uh, you know Doctor X uh, groped me uh, on this particular day in the hospital. Okay, so then she files a case of sexual harassment. Right? The internal committee members, all the members you've seen here, how will they know whether that happened or not? Because the nurse will say, look, this happened to me. And then Dr. X says, no, no, I did no such thing. She's just lying. How will they come to know? So here, because the thing is, um, uh, there has to be, the, the, the internal committee can't just guess. They have to come to some assessment. How do you know that this is so? How, how will you assess? And I think it will be... Um, Anyway, it, 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 it will be easy. I think uh, the medical professionals, I mean, doctors would be, would be very good at this because how do you assess, you know, what, what the problem is, you know, whether, you know, someone has, whether this, this organ is affected or that organ, you have to have some material. And so in law as well, how do you assess that this has actually happened? Because if they had been present at that time, they would not be on the internal committee. They would be witnesses. So they have to find enough evidence but how much evidence is necessary to come to a conclusion? The evidence in, in a civil case like this is in law, you have two types of cases. Huh? You've got, you've got uh, criminal cases, and a criminal case <clears throat> is a case which involves a crime. And a crime is something like you know, murder and rape and decoity. So these cases are criminal cases. All other cases are civil cases. So in a civil case <clears throat> like this in the, the Porsche Act, you have to, the level of proof required is not that high. In criminal cases, the level of proof required is extremely high. It's if someone, if I'm accused of murder, then for the criminal court to convict me of murder, there has to be evidence that is beyond a reasonable doubt. If there's, if there's any doubt that I may not have done it, I will get the benefit of that doubt. I can't be convicted if there's a doubt. In a civil case, there can be doubt. It's not beyond reasonable doubt. It's, it's about that maybe, yes, maybe, no, but it's most likely. The thing is about most likely. It is most likely that it happened. If, it, if, it, if the committee finds that it's very likely that this happened, then they can come to a conclusion that, that yes, sexual harassment has been occurred. But if there's not enough evidence to come to even that conclusion, then they can say it's not been proved. And that it's not been proved doesn't mean it's a false case. Huh? False case, this, that is very clear in the law. Just because you cannot prove your case does not mean it's a false case. False cases, and we have a separate inquiry showing that you know the person knew it's false and still went out to, to trap the person. Yeah. You know? So if it's not proved, children, the matter ends there. But if some if the allegations are proved, then you can make many recommendations. And there are service rules. Service rules very often when you uh, you know uh, can actually stipulate that for this thing you have this. Uh, this action must be taken. Otherwise, you, there's a whole range of things. Like the person can be told to uh, apologize. It could be we could be given a warning. It could be censure. It could be reprimand. Could be withholding promotion. Uh, it could be maybe withholding some salary amount, or it it sometimes suspension can also happen, or even termination from service. That that's maybe the highest thing. That there's something like counseling. The person can be told to counseling. Uh, can be told to maybe do some social service. So there are many different ways of uh, uh, you know uh, action that can be taken now the thing to recognize and see sexual harassment so this is not a criminal case we're not dealing with criminals here it's not about punishing people and the danda and so if someone has we committed sexual harassment so now we really must you know beat up this person no we will really see it's it's justice we want justice and justice is it's all about human beings have inherent dignity and we want that to come out we have to so sometimes people you know, maybe um, you know, the best thing is see, the legal system, we believe, especially those who advocate human rights, we believe that, you know, even the, uh, people like me, we don't believe in, in the death penalty. Now, why is that? The belief is that everyone can be reformed and no one is beyond, uh, you know, help. And you know, the worst person has something good in them and the best person has something not so good in them. So if you go by that, the idea is not about just punishing and beating people up. We try to get the best out of the person. So it doesn't mean for every case you have to win a terminate. Because termination has huge repercussions on a, not just on a man, but on the man's family. So we don't this will not be dealt with very easily, right? And the thing is, we try to what we want is a workplace that is safe. 
And if people are going to feel insecure, that doesn't lead to a safe workplace. If people are going to feel insecure, oh, a case is filed now, I'll be fired you know, automatically. That's not going to lead to a safe workplace. What we want is a just uh, atmosphere. So you want, we want a situation where to the extent possible, if the person didn't know, the respondent didn't know what is good, what is bad, let the person learn. Yeah. If the person, sometimes they just don't, and it's also the way we are brought up in, in our society. We are, you know, we are not taught uh, you know, about gender. We don't know how to behave with each other. In fact, our films are giving us the wrong ideas. So, uh, you know, it's, it's not that you know, someone who is found to have committed sexual harassment may actually be quite all right. And maybe it's possible to reform the person. Let's give a chance. Yeah? If a person is completely, you know, just not, you know, very, very stubborn and is creating problems, then sometimes you have to just get rid of that person. And yeah? because you have to protect your workplace, first of all. Yeah? So there are different actions which can be taken against a person uh, if the respondent is found to have committed uh, sexual harassment. There's also something of like deduction of salary of the respondent, which can be paid to the woman. You know? So it can happen. So uh, it, it's like a compensation to the complainant. Uh, that because of the sexual harassment, the respondent's salary, whatever amount, you know, will be uh, paid to the woman. And and here's an interesting thing they have in the law is that even and they say and because it's and the, the law is the, the very clever the, the persons who wrote this law is you know as soon as you know it's, it's in so many cases as soon as a case is filed, the respondent starts looking for another job. Yeah. So if he's in Ames right now, he'll start looking for, can I join Apollo or can I join Max and try to get out of this, right? And then he will continue harassment somewhere else, right? So here, even if the respondent has left the job, uh, the, the, and, and the salary, if, if, if there's an order passed, if he says, look, we want to, uh, his salary must be, uh, you know, some amount must go to the complainant, this can still be taken from the employer, yeah? And this can be done through sending it to the district officer to these uh, at the state level, and then this can be recovered as you know how how they how the government recovers uh, money for areas of land. There's a whole process there, so it can be recovered in that way. Yeah. And then within 60 days, the employer is supposed to act on the recommendations. And uh, if someone is not happy with the findings of the internal committee, it could be the complainant, it could be the respondent. You can always appeal to the uh, labor court against this. In an urgent case, suppose you find that, you know, you know it's a matter of one has lost one's job or whatever, it's, it's a life and death book issue. I mean, you can go straight to the high court in, in, in a writ petition. So depending on the seriousness of the case. You know? So these are all the things that you can do. This is about the procedural part of it. And yes, uh, the, I see since it can actually, um, it, 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 it can um, uh, impose, uh, it, it, decide to compensate the complainant. And so the thing that they will keep in mind is if the woman has suffered mental trauma, pain, suffering, loss of career opportunity, yeah, and medical expenses of the actual physical hurt, et cetera. Uh, and and it, it'll, it'll keep in mind things of the financial status of the respondent and whether this thing should be paid every month or in one shot. So all these things will be kept in mind when uh, in any rule is, uh, order is passed about, uh, any recommendations are made about compensation. <clears throat> so that's I uh, hope that's kind of that's clear in terms of procedures. So it's basically to keep in mind if you if you experience sexual harassment, write it down, make a note, and inform the internal committee. And then within three four months, it should be sorted out. Yeah? Now what you have to keep in mind is say sexual harassment in the workplace can also amount to a criminal offense. So I just told you that Porsche Act is not a criminal law. It's a civil. It, it, it's a civil matter, right? But sexual harassment can also amount to uh, a crime in under the Indian Penal Code. Just just look at that. No rape. We saw in Bhavri Devi's case, it was a case of gang rape, very serious offense in the Indian Penal Code. So if rape occurs, or there's something called an outraging a woman's modesty, where there's some criminal assault on a woman, this again is a this is a crime or it is insulting a woman's modesty or, you know, sexual harassment, but is in the IPC, not sexual harassment in the workplace, but any sexual harassment, yeah. It, but the, the, the definition is much more narrow than it is with um, in the Bosch Act. So all these can also be crimes. Hmm. And if it's a, uh, and then also this, you know, a voyeurism, so, you know, sort of invading a woman's privacy or disrobing her or stalking her, the very serious thing, uh, all these are also criminal offenses. 
So if sexual harassment in the workplace is taking any of these forms, then this is also a crime and, some, and, and serious crimes. And so here you, you should do two things. One is you tell the internal committee, so there will be a posh case, of course, but, they, but you, will also, you should also go to the police. Don't take these things lightly. Hmm? There's massive unreporting of sexual offenses in India, even cases like rape. You know, it's shocking that less than 10% of, you know, rape uh, cases are actually reported. And so it's no wonder that, you know, you know, um, offenders in India get the sense, you know, it's easy to get away with it because this reporting is so low, right? So the message goes that, you know, there's a very, very high chance of getting away with rape in India because it's not even being reported properly. Because reporting has gone up now, but still. So in these cases, you should do both. Go to the IC and also the police. In fact, the IC... If you want help, we'll help you to go to the police. Yeah. So do both, because then you will have two cases going on. You will have the civil case, the Porsche case. You will also have the police case, the criminal case going on. And it's important for both to happen because, look, in a crime like this, so the internal committee, the internal committee's job is to make sure so Ames Hopal IC will ensure that Ames Hopal is a safe place to work in. It does not have the power to sentence someone to 10 years of imprisonment. You cannot do that. Hmm? That the criminal court can do, right? So in a, in a crime like this, you must do both, and it is perfectly fine for two cases to go on together. The criminal cause, uh, the criminal case will go on. If the criminal court finds the person guilty, the person will be sent to jail. If they find that no, it's the person's not guilty, can be acquitted. That's another issue. Very often, our criminal uh, you know processes, prosecution is a little weak, so you know you know you know the conviction levels are a bit low in India. But the Porsche Act, you know, because it's a civil case, the amount of proof you need is much less. It is quite possible to uh, ensure that the respondent action is taken against the respondent, even if nothing comes of the criminal case. You know, certainly the, under the Porsche Act, maybe something will come up, right? So these two cases will go on, can go on simultaneously. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more thing to keep in mind. Uh, when you, in any case of sexual harassment, in any actually, uh, you know, that we have to respect the privacy of the persons involved, especially the complainant. Look, look, here, I, here's a country where you, you know, rape is not reported. And can you guess why? It's because of the stigma. You know, even now in India, if a young woman is, uh, you know, uh, uh, reports rape and her neighbors, everybody comes to know about it, her chances of getting married get reduced. You know, there's, it, it's like she's brought dishonor to the family. We have these notions that women suffer with, they, you know, there, there's the whole trauma of rape. And then the additional thing of what happens because of that, when people come to know, they keep pointing fingers, or oh, that's what happened. She's the one who was, you know. So, they, you know, we have to, it's difficult for women to report sexual offenses. And you know, we've, the study after study has shown this. You know that it's, it's it, she gets flack from society, not just in rape, but in any in, in se sexual offences uh, cases, uh, where her family start questioning the police. Sometimes question her, what were you doing in that? Or why were you wearing this? All kinds of these questions come up. Yeah, they're very unhelpful questions. So anyway, you know, so women don't want to uh, complain. Because they're afraid, they, they don't want to be a people. They want who wants people to keep talking about, you know, uh, what, what happened to them? Because it's, 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 it can be a very intimate thing. It, 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 it affects one's mind and body in a very deep way. Right? So we must respect the privacy, the respect, the dignity of each person. We respect ourselves. We must respect others also. Right? So that is why we should maintain the confidentiality. I mean, one reason is yes, this in in, in the Porsche Act. The Porsche Act is basically saying that you know, the identity of witnesses, etc., the, the degree of woman, what happened in the case, the uh, uh, respondent, all this, it should all be confidential. Hmm. And uh, um, in fact, that anyone who is uh, responsible for dealing with, with the case should, you know, should maintain confidentiality, right? Uh, and there's a punishment that if you violate this, you can be fined 5,000 rupees. Now, 5,000 rupees, I know, is not a very big amount. Now, there used to be a big amount at one point, right? But some people say, I spend this amount, amount just on, on one dinner, so big, I'll give, give 5,000 rupees. So I'm saying, don't go, don't observe this because of that money. And maybe the money doesn't mean very much to you. But it must mean something that, you know, we, we respect the dignity of the other. Please respect the privacy because it can have 
horrible ramifications on a woman's family life. So, you know, don't take this lightly. You know? uh, of course, uh, some information, see, even with the internal committee, it is allowed to give information about, you know, you know the, if, if justice was given in a particular case, that they can give information. But even there, they cannot disclose the name of the, uh, the woman. It's, all these things cannot be disclosed at all. So it's about respecting privacy. That is why we maintain confidentiality. And there's the, another reason. You know, now there is, I just mentioned that, you know, so many of these, uh, you know, um, are, are offenses under the Indian, Indian Penal Code. And there's something in the IPC, it's called Section 228A, which is disclosure of identity of victims of certain offenses, you know, these sexual, uh, the, the offenses I, 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 I just showed you. If you reveal the names, you know, of, of victims of these uh, things, you can, you can go to jail. It's, it is an offense in itself, right? So be cautious about uh, disclosing the names of, you know, this happened, that happened, because, you know, remember a Porsche case can also become a sexual, uh, it, 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 it can become a criminal case as well. Yeah? So let us be very cautious and maintain that confidentiality. At the very least, because you could go to jail for it, at the very least, because you can be fined for it, but more, much more than that, it is, please, as, as decent people, we are all trying to be decent people. We want to do the right thing. It's the right thing to do. We have to respect, uh, we have to respect people's privacy. And so let us be a country that, you know, that maintains this. Uh, it's, it's a basic civil uh, behavior. Yeah? So that's why we must maintain this confidential. Don't, don't be yapping about it. It's very bad when it happens. You know, people are talking about it in, in the office canteen. They, 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 this happened. And because, you know, sometimes in, in, in the in companies, for instance, they know, okay, this case is, especially in, in smaller organizations, uh, they know that's the room where this case is going on. And this person's going now to give evidence, you know, so people can, and then they'll start talking. And because it, it, it basically lowers the whole standard of the organization. So, so let us not bring it down to some gossiping kind of a thing. It, 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 it's very undermining. Yeah. Ha, and the final thing is, see, see, now this law is a beneficial legislation. There's a term called beneficial legislation is, it is a statute which, which confers a benefit on individuals or a certain class of people. It is, it is a social welfare legislation, which is there for the benefit of, it could be children, it could be, you know, laborers, and in this case, it's for women, right? A certain category of persons. And so in these social welfare legislations, you see, you have to, interpretation has to be very liberal. There are, in law, there are two types of interpretation. There's, there's a strict interpretation. You go strictly by the letter of the law. Like, you know, you have criminal statutes or say, the, the, the taxation statutes, you know, what, how much tax a person has to pay will be exactly as per what the law is saying. Yeah? You don't have a liberal uh, view on that. Yeah? But in this sort of a law, you know, like the, the right to life, they say, the right to life, you know, a, a liberal interpretation means not just that you're living, uh, you're alive and breathing, a life of dignity. That's the broad view of the right to life. So here, you know, the Porsche, if you take a liberal view, it is whatever is necessary to ensure the protection of women in the workplace. Yes, you take the broad view. So wherever there are two interpretations possible, take the interpretation which should protect women. So we don't have to be, so this is basically, don't go by the, strictly by the letter of the law. You can go beyond it because this whole law was based on people, you know, for more, so going beyond what was already available. So to have a liberal view. So this is where right to life is not about right to breathe in and breathe out. You're physically alive like a vegetable. Right to life means a life of dignity, security, etc. So uh, Porsche Act is a beneficial legislation. So believe that this is here to protect the world. It's, it's, it's about protecting workplaces. And since women are more at risk of facing sexual harassment, so if you protect, if women are safe in a workplace, the men will also be safe in the workplace. And so that is the idea. So it's a beneficial legislation. And uh, just come to some do's and don'ts. So um, good to remember, see, sexual harassment, it depends on the perception of the person, the woman or the person to whom the words or actions are directed. It's never about your intentions. It's how that other person Felt. It's about that person's perceptions. So just because you say, I meant well, or if someone said that to me, I'd be fine. It's not about you. It's about the other person. Did she feel okay about it? 
and right now, see, we're talking about Porsche now, but very soon in the country, we'll talk about there'll be laws on other areas of discrimination. So it's good to start right away. Let us be respectful. It's good for everyone. You know, the, when you're good to others, you, you, you're also good to your own soul and, and, and yourself. We, we, we are happier people when you're good to others. So let's start now. Respect everyone, regardless of race, creed, color, national origin, sex, age, disabilities, pregnancy, marital status. Let's just be respectful. It's good for them and then most of all, it'll be, it'll be good for, for us as well. Yeah? Uh, be supportive of those who are complaining of uh, sexual harassment. Suppose there is a genuine case, and so don't be part of the thing of it. Just, oh, you know, you'll ruin your career. Don't do this. You know, you know, uh, pressurizing a person to take back the case, or you know, don't get into all these headaches. You know, so don't discourage people. If you, if you, you know, try to not be part of the problem. Try to be part of the solution. Mm. Now, this is the key thing. Keep your relationships professional at work. Now, professional. Who is a professional? Someone who is good at the work, very deeply committed to the work, very competent, ethical. And that is a professional, someone who's, you know, you can rely on, you know. Uh, it's not professional, doesn't mean you're rude and you're informed and, and you know you're unfriendly, you don't you don't talk to people, you have no empathy. That is in fact being unprofessional, it's being rude. Professionals have empathy. They are they're, they're the people you can rely on. These are people you, you, you can trust. They're the people who will help you. They will mentor you. That's a professional, a competent person whose work is excellent. Be that. Be a professional. You don't, you don't have to go clowning around. I mean, you're, you're not in a, in a, watching a football match. You're there to work. You've got to respect that. Respect that workplace. Your, your work, your uh, behavior must respect, must reflect where it is that you are working. Yeah? Now your communication, if you're sending emails or whatever, WhatsApp is a, you know, be very cautious about what you write there. Facebook, oh my God, social media can be one real place of, you know, source of problems. Be careful what you're writing. If you're Facebook friends with all your colleagues, I mean, be careful what photos you, you, uh, you post. Hmm? It should be appropriate when read by others. And uh, if you have, an, and now this law does not restrict you from having romantic relationships, so long as they are respectful. Huh? But if you are in a romantic relationship, it's good to inform your HR, that your, your superiors, that so because it, it should not look, um, if you are in, in a relationship today with someone who's a junior to you, and then you, you are writing that person's assessment reports, etc., it doesn't look good. And when you should, you should not be doing it, 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 will, it will cause you problems later on. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have that basic, I'm not saying go and tell the whole world, oh, I'm in a relationship, but tell the, your superior or tell the HR department. <clears throat> now don't, don't assume anti-discrimination policies are irrelevant to you as professional. You may be ever so brilliant, you may have always stopped in your career, you may be the, the bestest surgeon of them all, you may be the greatest doctor. But if you, you know, this can bring you down. Do not assume that you know you are you that these laws are irrelevant to you. Mm -hmm. That you can behave any that you are indispensable. How can they get rid of me? I'm such a fabulous doctor, or whatever. You have to, you know, this. It, 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 it's you have. You are not above your workplace. Yeah, you have to respect your workplace and respect all those who are there in the workplace. Now, here's something you've got to be very careful about in India. You know, the jokes, see, it's good to tell jokes and have a light, you know, a good atmosphere of working, but what kind of jokes are we telling? Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be about poking fun, and we do that so We're poking fun at, you know, first we're laughing at North Indians, then we laugh at South Indians, and then we laugh at the Bengalis, and then we laugh at the, you know, why? We, let us not have this. Let, if, you, if you want a joke, it's good to laugh, but let us increase our level of humor, you know? So let it be... Um, uh, it should not be about someone's race and color, creed, you know, all these things. Let, 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 us not, let, let us not make fun of people, you know. Our joke shouldn't be making fun of people. Let's have fun, but not by making fun of people, yeah. Uh, and then don't believe that just because you didn't mean to be offensive that it's not a problem. It doesn't matter what you meant. It doesn't matter. Don't pretend that your emails, faxes are outside the policies that forbid, you know, these, uh, you know, so be, 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 be professional in everything you're doing in the workplace. You're not in your sitting room. Even if you're working from home, you're working, you have to be, uh, be professional. And don't think just because you're in a romantic relationship that it is your personal business. If, if your relationship is at work, then it is good to follow the protocols. 
Yes, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, uh, we can have the next round of questions, and I think we can have a, uh, as many, you know, we can open it up for interactions. Hmm. I have, <laughs> there are some questions which I would rather ask uh, Bhavna ji or any other from the panel to address. Because a lot of people, uh, some people have asked that who, who HR department, whether do we have an HR department at AIMS or not. So I think ma'am can answer that. Because they, some women are quoting instances of gender discrimination, uh, which they face. Like, uh, for example, one person is saying, one woman is saying that in the surgical department, a senior uh, doctor said that women should not uh, come to surgery and waste a seat because they cannot do perform surgery, you know, making some gender bias comments. So, yeah, uh, like a lot of people are asking whether HR department is there, where they can take cases like these uh, to be filed or like, you know, complaint against this. Now, um, ma'am, to coming to your topic, I think uh, for, for this, uh, there's one person asking if the incident of harassment has occurred outside the campus of organization, does that action come under IC uh, purview or not? Right. Yeah. Okay. Can, can I just also come in a little bit? I mean, a statement like this, you know, if you have a sexist, see, see, gender discri gender discrimination and sexual harassment. Sometimes, you know, you know, it, they, 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 they can. It, 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 it's not that there's a. They completely separate. Now, someone making a sexist remark like this, it can be taken as sexual harassment. If someone tells me you're a woman, so you should not be coming for surgery. I don't know if I, if I heard you correctly. That, 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 that can be, it's, it's a sexually colored remark. It can be taken as, you know, that you're not fit. You're un undermining me. I'm a woman. I'm not fit to, I mean, I would take that as, you know, it's possible to take it as a sexual harassment case as well. You can't have sexist remarks like that. You know, if you're a woman, you, I mean, if I've heard it correctly, huh? Yes, ma'am. So That's sexist remarks would, would, would fall within this. It, it, it would be both. And it's coming from gender discrimination, of course, but it, it could be harassment of me. If I'm not being allowed to go somewhere because I'm a woman and I'm told women should not be doing this, and that is a, that's a sexist remark. And it, 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 it amounts to harassment of me. Yes, ma'am. Um, yeah. I mean, it could be taken because you know, we have this broad definition, you know? To all the students and participants and viewers who are uh, 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 accessing the question, uh, a question link is live on the web link itself. Uh, you should be able to see it in case you are seeing welcome to AIMS Mobile Webinar. Just refresh your screen. The link should be there on, on the top. It's in the ticker, scrolling ticker. And coming to this thing of uh, the second question, uh, so if something does not happen in, uh, it happens outside the workplace, then it will not be a workplace issue. No? So suppose, you know, for instance, if, um, uh, I mean, uh, we, we, we cannot bring in everything within the internal committee, right? So suppose I'm on holiday somewhere in, in Goa and then something happens to me there, how can I then bring that case to the uh, IC in Popal? No, it could be a, then we have to go by the criminal uh, legal system, either file an FIR there or, or whatever. But it depends on if, if something has happened in someone else's workplace, even if I'm on holiday. You know? I suppose I went on holiday and I'm staying in some, I don't know, Four Seasons hotel and then I'm sexually harassed in that hotel. Mm. Then yes, I can file a case in that you know, Four Seasons thing in, in their internal committee, right? Yeah, I, I, sorry to interrupt, but I think here that person, yeah. what I can understand, maybe she means that if suppose two colleagues, they go to a party or let's say they are in a yeah. non-work environment, but they are colleagues mm. in that situation. Right, right. Huh. Yeah, so here the thing is, you know, this is where it's good to have, you know, uh, an, an internal policy which deals with all these things. So, you know, a, a really good policy is one which would cover these things. So where if you if you are there because you are colleagues, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. suppose, for instance, it is your seniors, you know, the, 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 there's a wedding and so, you know, a, a, a bunch of faculty, you know, a lot of you have gone there. It's, 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 it can, it's, it's part of the reason you're there is because you're, you're, uh, you're, you're working uh, in Ames, for instance, yeah? yeah. So although it's not really, you know, they're no work-related thing, but um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a rather a broad um, uh, argument, but um, I think 
if if you could say it's because it, if if it can extend to something like an official engagement that i'm there i was there because my superiors you know uh, I, i'm there because i'm an employee of aims there are some social occasions where you are required to go because of your official position mm -hmm. you know so if you're going to a friend's place friend's wedding nothing to do with aims then that's a set. but if you you're going with your colleague to your aunt's house and then that's nothing to do with aims but i would argue that if you go to any function now for instance suppose you know the head of some department head of your department that that, that head son is getting married huh so what tends to happen is that everyone is expected in a sense to attend mm. it becomes it's it's like an official social function and then something happens you're going there because if you were working in in in, in apollo probably you would not be going for that fun maybe you wouldn't be invited also right but you're going there it's it's like an extended social function because of your job i think in a in, in an you can stretch it to include that because that person ultimately also going to see him see him or her at work right yes. i think you could but if it's there's no relation at all see if if, if this were clarified in the policy that would be best because mm -hmm. we have to recognize that there are social functions which are professionally determined there are marriages we attend because we because we are colleagues not because this one is my friend i have to i work here i'm expected to go yeah Yeah. Right. So, so if 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 it's a social occasion like that, then I think we should because it's like an inclusive definition. Yeah. Uh, and also, there's one more question. Uh, how does the com complaint about sexual harassment go? If the same, uh, if the same is done by a member of the IC committee or the head of the institute. Right. so if the complaint is against a member of the internal committee then for that particular case the internal committee that, that member should not be sitting in the internal committee okay. hmm. the other members will the remaining ic will continue so you have a basic quorum for ics you may have to have at least three people there including the presiding including the chair so three people would be enough to can so that particular member should not be on the ic then she cannot Uh, he he can he or she cannot be sitting in the ic when the case is against them yeah that be a complete violation of natural justice yeah mm -hmm. if it's against the head of the institution so you cannot uh, then the case must go to the local committee you cannot that cannot be dealt with by the internal committee because because even the one may argue look you know i i will be neutral the members will say look we will we will be completely fair and neutral but from front outside they will say look you know how can we be sure how do we know because you're all answerable to this to the head the head has the power to dismiss all of you mm -hmm. how can we uh, assume that you will be fair and you can argue no i will i will act fearlessly and fairly find that and maybe you would do that but the principle of law is justice must not only be done it has to be seen to be done and so there should be no so these sort of uh, a uh, deficiency should not be there where, where, where anyone could later on argue look you know you might you could easily have been put under pressure by your uh, you know by the head of the institution yeah? yeah and anyway it's very clearly also in the law that if it's the head of the organization then the that that matter must go to the local committee it cannot be taken up by the internal committee there is a question ma'am uh, somebody is asking that does mp state has a woman commission if not then a state i think uh, mp has a women commission yes madhya pradesh yes, raj yes i think it does yes yes there. yes abhi uh, uh, yes i'm very surprised if it doesn't yes it does have a yes it does have a women commission and that person is asking what other avenues can be contacted up, apart from ic to register hmm. a case of harassment Well, the first thing should be your internal committee. If there is no internal committee, then you should go to the local committee. Right. Otherwise, you can always approach the women's commissions. You can approach there are NGOs. You could talk to. You can go to the police if it's if it if it is a criminal case. Yeah. But don't bypass the. I mean, you can go to the high court also directly. But don't bypass the internal committee. Many will say, oh, oh, you know, they would not take it seriously. Oh, there's never been a case. They don't. And there are actually some organizations where the IC. some members don't even know they are internal committee members so they have no training on how to deal with the issue uh, but even so one should still approach them first let me refresh for more questions if there are hmm, there aren't many questions apart 
from what I just asked you. So let me just scroll down once again. So in the meantime, uh, we have Professor Neil Kamal Kapoor with us, who has been uh, the chairperson of the erstwhile ICC. And uh, should we have, shouldn't we have a few comments from her? Madam Kapoor, please. Yeah, thanks for uh, putting me in, although I, I, I don't know what's happened to the video. Um, but anyway, you can hear me. Uh, it's really a very, very interesting interaction which is happening. And especially for those uh, who are attending, um, it must be clarifying lots of doubts in their minds. And perhaps more importantly, what, they, what this program is doing is you know, focusing besides all that, uh, you know, the commas and full stops of the Posh Act, um, the the very the very intent of the Act and the very intent of the um, committee as well, because uh, the Internal Complaints Committee uh, is taken by all employees, you know, in a for and against kind of manner. So uh, they must get the message after this uh, these three days of interactions and that it is not about uh, for or against anyone but it is about the facts which are presented it is about the examination of these facts about the intent of things and at the end of it uh, you know the civil law because especially why i say it, this because is um, because uh, before uh, Actually, I have been associated with this kind of committee in my previous employment also when the Posh Act was not there, the Vishakha guidelines had just come in and everybody was really confused about uh, what is uh, all that. And also, I, I am a 60 plus person. So I am of the generation that, uh, you know, when we began, began our careers, uh, this, uh, this, this kind of business was rampant and um, uh, it only what should I say, depend, you know, the prevention dependent, uh, depended upon the inner core strength and personality of the woman involved, how much she could, you know, resist or throw off the person and all. So uh, this is a great mm -hmm. evolution, but having said that, uh, the counterpoint is that this law or for that matter, any law should not be abused, should not be misused. Uh, so that's, uh, these are the points I'm taking home uh, from all the interaction and also through my experience of uh, being associated with the, this committee and the previous ones which were formed due to the guidelines. And uh, we, we also have had a spectrum of cases and uh, some difficult, some simple, some uh, reconciliated, some, someone counseled and someone directed off to the direction where actually the case was meant to be like administrative revams and things like that. So, but thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am, for your words of wisdom, ma'am. Uh, Soumya, madam, do we have any other questions, ma'am, for this session or we are uh, done with it? Uh, ma'am, we don't have any other question right now. Like they, are, they have not come up. I just refreshed. Right. So uh, at the conclusion of this session, uh, let me just complete by uh, by the, uh, the remark which I made in the earlier session, also the morning session. And uh, that is the baseline that you must your conduct should be absolutely professional in a workplace. Do not leave a margin of, you know, justification at the end of your uh, conduct that it was a sort of a mild conduct, not a very severe conduct. So why am I being held responsible for that? So it should be a thoroughly professional conduct as per desired in a professional place, because ultimately a very small word that is unwelcome determines whatever you have done. So it may not be an intentional thing. You may have been unintentional, but then uh, at the end of the day, it is the impact what matters. So keep your professional conduct absolutely professional in your workplace to avoid such uh, such you know uh, misconducts and uh, have a healthy working environment a safe environment not for all the female uh, staff members but for everybody in the in this setup so 
Thank you, uh, all the panelists and our uh, resource person, Madam Anju, has been taking uh, the sessions uh, through the day. And uh, I think uh, we are impressed by your energy, ma'am. And um, all the session officials and panelists, we are thankful. And, uh, and an encouraging news that we have more than 1,000 uh, uh, views uh, today. And uh, the is <laughs> also yes. yes. So that is great to hear. Right. Well, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. And it, it's really, I, um, I find nothing more energizing than speaking on the law. I mean, I, I, I love this. <laughs> so, and, it's, and, and, and really, I, I, I've been saying this so many times. I'm so hot and I'm so glad that you know and, and i think aims i think you're going to set the the tone for the rest of the um, you know uh, industry of you know i think it, it, this could be a path breaking thing which i'm so glad to see that you're taking it seriously and i, I really do appreciate that and and I, I, um, I, I i want to extend that you know sense to all the participants that you know you should feel safe that you know you, this is taken seriously in your organization and uh, it will be taken any fears you have will be taken care of if you have any complaints definitely it will be taken care of and, so sure of that. So thank you all for the this. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much, everyone. Just the last closing remarks I'll make that it was really enriching, uh, like Dr. Bhavna said, and it was great to learn all these uh, um, different uh, aspects of gender sensitization and the law by uh, Anju Ma'am. And I would request the audience as well, if they have any issues, they can, they should not be hesitant in contacting the committees. And maybe we can um, sensitize them more regarding the laws and all through our IC material, which we have already developed uh, uh, by our IC committee has already developed some uh, posters and information, which I think they will be circulating to the student body and the staff body. Thank you from my side.